Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. Whitaker Myers Group has been a local trusted advisor since 1869, serving families in Ashland, Richland, and Wayne County. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. With offices in Ashland, Mansfield, Worcester, Columbus, and South Carolina, we have advisors that are ready to help you begin your journey to financial success. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting.
No fire. BB and C. is the site of tonight's Friday night matchup between the Arrows and the T.Y. Tigers. Here from North Central Ohio, the Arrows and Tigers in a big OCC matchup. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne bringing you all the action. Having a little technical difficulties here and there. Welcome to our friends over at the OH Report as well. Happy to have them joining us here tonight for the broadcast. Tony, the Arrows and Tigers are uh, a rivalry that everybody knows about. Neither of these schools particularly like each other a whole lot. There's a lot of, there's no love lost. And the interesting thing, when you look at the series history, 37 wins apiece and three ties. Yeah, you know, the, the best part of a, a good rivalry is there's balance and it's back and forth. You know, looking at the overall record, no team has really gone on a win streak beyond three or four games in the 90 some years that they've been playing. So. Ashland got the last two all last year, one in the regular season, one in the postseason. Mansfield Tigers would love to not just even even the score with a big win tonight, but really stick it to the arrows. Tony, let's take a look at the UH Samaritan injury report brought to you by University Hospitals Samaritan Medical Center. Learn more at uhhospitals.org. What do you got for us tonight? Yeah, Brady Welsh sat out last week with a shoulder. We thought he uh, may be able to go, but they sat him out. He's going to be back at full capacity. They're going to need every little bit of him on that defensive side. The Marion Dennison also with a torn ACL. He played limited last week at home, uh, a little bit more offense than defense. I expect to see that switch this week. They're going to want him on the defensive line, getting some pressure against Brock Hill and Hayden Hensel, number 76. Big offensive lineman, still going to be out one more week, trying to get back with a, with a little bit of injury still kind of lagging around. Arrow's offensive line is a key for Landon McFrederick tonight because we expect pressure and we expect him to be on the move a little bit tonight. Yeah, Mansfield senior loves to attack, so they're going to put their you know, secondary man-to-man, -man, really let those front seven or front six go free and go after number one, Landon McFrederick. So the offensive line is going to have to buy him some time, something that they've struggled with a little bit, and Landon's going to have to make some plays. So, so when some guy comes free, either make a quick pass, uh, yards after catch, yards after contact, all going to be big for the arrows. They're going to need to get some big plays. I'm going to put six, six plays over 15 yards to get a win tonight. Arrows and Tigers here at Arlen Field, a beautiful facility, renovated. Press box is beautiful. Turf in good shape. The stands painted and fresh. Looking really good here, Tony. The Arrows will receive here to start off. It'll be Johnny Metzger deep. Arrows going left to right here in the first quarter. They're in the visiting white jerseys, black numbers and orange trim. We're just thankful to be out here on a beautiful night. We've had great weather, Tony, every week so far this season. <laughs> yeah, I said as we were walking across the field again, you know, week seven, and I'm not sure we've had better weather on a Friday night than I could ever imagine. No rain, no cold weather. You know, if we could do this for three more weeks, that'd be great. Arrows, of course, next week will be at Lexington, and that uh, is another game the Arrows should be able to be competitive in for sure as they're playing much better. The Arrows are after the first couple weeks of the season were tough. And it's going to be Metzger and Hasse deep for the Arrows. And got Maffitt in there, Truax, Trey Boyd, uh, several of the up men, Braylon Hyder for Ashland. And then 
we'll see who Mansfield sends out to kick. I think Sean Put will be booting it away. The kicker for senior, very solid kicker. Saw him warming up out here. Five of six from field goal range this year. Put can really boot that ball. Excellent accuracy. So the Tigers, the TY Tigers in orange with black numbers and white trim. We're about to get underway here on a football Friday night. Thanks for joining us here on iHeartRadio and the OH Report. You'll find that on Facebook, the YouTube channel too. Sean Put will boot it away. Door one. Up front might be an onside, and they almost get to it on the near side, but it goes out of bounds. Interesting call there by head coach Chokey Bradley in his 12th season. Yeah, they saw Ethan Truax kind of set up a little bit deeper maybe than he should have been, just taking advantage of an empty spot in the lineup. So, unfortunately, just gave it a little bit too much, went out of bounds. They're probably going to decline it because the ball actually went out before the 35, but giving good arrows a good start in position. Amar Davis was the gunner on the outside, almost got to that ball <laughs> going down the sideline. It's what you want to do. You want to put your speedster as a gunner for two reasons. One, to get down and make the tackle, and two, if you can beat him to the ball, that's a live ball, and it's a free ball. So a little bit of trickery for Mansfield senior to start, but turns out for, uh, to start on Ashland at the 44. McFrederick will step up into that shotgun with five wide. What do you see defensively here right away from the Tigers? Yeah, they're coming right up into, into man pressure, which we thought. You know, they're going to play man to man and try to put pressure in the middle with extra rushers. Hand off to Spots, and he's met immediately in the backfield and wrapped up. Nice tackle, shoestring tackle by Ricky Mills off the defensive line, linebacker spot. Just an athletic Mansfield Tigers team, you know, from, you know, offensively and defensively. They're, they don't play with size. They're not trying to put their big 290-pound linemen in there. They want athletes who can get to the football. Quickly to the line, five wide still, now four wide. Spots in there. Bringing everybody up in the box, it looks like here, inside the 52nd, down, and 11 at the 43-yard line. Going left to right. Throw to the near side, Metzger caught at the 50 and wrapped up by three Tigers right away. First man on the scene was Jaonte Bryant. O'Brien, sorry. Good pickup for six there for McFedrick's favorite target. Uh, Johnny Metzger's just been consistent, you know, and it's the place where number one likes to look. I think you call it the m, &M connection, and we're gonna see a lot of it tonight. Arrows, after last week's win, are in position right now if the playoffs started today to start in the playoffs. Nonetheless, at two and four, five wide, four wide, single back. Looking left, looks right, screen pressure. pass to Spots. Good pressure, good call by Coach Cedar. First down for the Arrows and then some. Spots has it inside the 30 and a big pickup for 22. the Arrows. Great, great call right there, right? It's what you do when you know a team's going to bring pressure is you, you know, you run screens and you run little bubbles and, you know, they brought five or six guys and spots. No one's on them. You know, when you bring extra guys, you're going to leave someone open. So good job by Landon finding the open receiver, pick up a big 22. Spots, nice hands out of the backfield as well. Yeah, we've seen that a lot in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> really developing into a nice receiver as a running back. Hasse in motion, now stays at the end, hand off to Spots. It's inside the 30, now to the 25, still chugging forward. Brought down by a host of Tigers, including Leo Hess, the 5'10 junior linebacker. Hasse checks out. Looks like he might be a little bit dinged there, but you see he's over there with the coaching staff. Pretty good crown here for a Friday night. Big stadium here on both sides. Yeah, you, you're used to kind of seeing high school stadiums that have a big home side and a really little tiny away, you know, fan side. But this is equal left and right. Uh, the whole thing kind of set into a bowl. Beautiful stadium. Hand off to Maffitt coming in on the end around, or not the end around, I should say, but coming from that slot and not much there. Yeah, just a little counter play, you know, trying to get the, the defense thinking that they're going to go right and going back left. Mansfield wasn't surprised at all. Again, the strength of this Mansfield team is going to be their defense. They're giving up under 20 points a game in most of their games, so they want to keep the, the, the score low if possible. So they're going to have to step up here and try to keep Ashton from getting into the end zone. The arrows, of course, like to quickly get to the line of scrimmage when they have a alignment that they like, and McFrederick and company now changing the play. Two left, two right, single back. Lots of space in the middle of the field right now. Back to pass, looking downfield, pressure sack. 
and he has lost a lot of yards back near the 38-yard line, and Mansfield Sr. was all over that, and Landon McFrederick had no chance, Tony. Yeah, again, Mansfield just bringing pressure, you know, Makai Bradley, the, you know, the recipient this time of the sack, but really there were two free runners on the right side. There's overwhelming one side of our offensive line numerically that you can't block them all, and they're banking that our secondary is going to be able to defend long enough to confuse the quarterback and get to you that time big sack of about 12 yards. So the arrows will be forced to punt. Fourth down and 18 coming up. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Frederick back in his own territory at the 49. Looks like sophomore Amar Davis sitting back there, five foot 11, little speedster, maybe their third receiver that see as a wide receiver, but has speed. There's a flag, I think, on the arrows for delay of game. That'll push him back five yards. Not a big loss there as they're Give him a little more room to boot this ball away and maybe try to pin the arrows deep, or pin the Tigers deep, I should say. Yeah, Nashville's been using two different punters. You know, this time, number one, uh, McFrederick's going to be back there. We've seen uh, Root back there punting quite a bit. So sometimes we think Ashland in this kind of unique setup with, you know, four linemen off to the right might try a fake, but this is way too far on fourth down. High, booming punt. And Amar Davis is going to let it go. Arrows have a chance to pin him deep. Inside the five, Trey Boyd saves it. Tremendous play, and it'll be inside the five down near the two. What a great play and good patience by the Arrows. Maybe a bit of a gamble there by Trey Boyd. Yeah, I think on game one or game two, we talked to the coaches after the game and said, we haven't really practiced downing the ball. You know, of all the things you practice, you know, in the summertime of you get your offense, you get your defense, you get, you get your kickoff team, they kind of realized that, hey, we didn't really practice punt coverage. Clearly, they figured that out in the last five games. Uh, great job, great hang time. Great coverage, way to not be distracted by the, the fake fair catch by Davis there and down in on here in the two. Well, now Brock Hill and the TY Tigers are pinned at the two. They'll actually mark it at the one, Tony. First and 10 inside the one, and this is an opportunity for this arrow's defense. <laughs> this may be the only time you don't see four or five wide for the Tigers, too, tonight. Handoff going right up the middle. Not much there. Mills bounces it That's out. A safety. And it might be a safety. We'll see what the marking is. They're going to give him. They're going to give him past the goal line, but that's a generous spot. Maybe a Mansfield City spot here on the road. Uh, yeah, this Ashland crowd uh, made the same bad angle that I did, but I'm not sure he got out of that end zone. Uh, it looks like Ashland's going to pin their, their ears back and go after one more time. Mansfield's not built for this to try to get one yard. Second down and 10. Hill under center, and he just rumbles forward behind the left guard to give himself another yard. That'll put it out to the two. Well, not much you can do there. Smart play there by Brock Hill to just fall forward, try to get a little yardage, maybe even just for your punter. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, there, there's not a lot you can do. Uh, you know, the safest play typically in high school is you turn around and give it to your fullback, and they almost got a safety on the first play. But the next play that's even safer is quarterback just lean forward and try to get something. So at this point, you're right. Would they like to get a first down? That'd be great. But at this point, they just need two or three yards for their punter to have a little breathing room. Full house. Hill's going to keep it around the edge. He's met by Schmitz and Grissinger, who bring him down at about the eight-yard line. Well, gain of six, but they needed nine. It'll be fourth down. Here comes the punting unit for the Tigers. Yeah, and Ashland will have to make a decision here if they want to try to go after it. I think they will. You know, typically a punter is going to be 10 to 12 yards back, so he's not actually going to be able to get his full depth. Um, maybe he's going to have to quick punt a little bit quicker here. So it would be a great time to go after a punt if you can. Rock Hill will be deep. Metzger standing at his own 35. Whew. Hill's going to punt it away. Standing about three yards short of the back of the end zone. Metzger standing at the 40. Good snap. Kicks away. It's a decent one. Metzger will go and track it down at the 45. To the 40. Pushed out of bounds at the 38. Good coverage by the Tigers. But the Arrows will start with great field position, Tony, here for their second possession of the ball game. Yeah, you, if you can't get points on the first possession, the, the next best thing is to pin them deep and then get the ball with good field position. So great job by the Arrows defense. We didn't really see a typical Mansfield start. Again, they like to go four wide, five wide if they can. But when you're standing on your one, you can't. So Ashton has to come out here and figure out, hey, how did they get pressure on us? Twice now we saw McFrederick get pressure as a, as a passer. Uh, got spots open one time, they're either going to have to find out, hey, some quicker routes if we're going to send some wide receivers deep or bring a, a running back in and keep him in as an extra blocker. And the shotgun, McFrederick, handoff, no play action to spots, throws it over Metzger's head. 
on the far side. Hey, you're listening to Fireland's Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340, powered by Fireland's Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Even on that last play, you know, Malachi Mays coming from a safety position on a blitz. Ashland, though, going with the quick option of, of throwing it out quick to Metzger. So Ashland's making the appropriate adjustments, I think, at this point, knowing that they're going to have some athletes running at them throughout this whole night. Two backs, sidecars either side, throwing down the slot. He's got Story wide open. Touchdown, Arrows. If he gets there, and he does. Wow. I'm not sure why he took an indirect route. I think the center of the field is wide open, but the result's the same. <laughs> touchdown, Arrows. I started to call touchdown, and he crossed back the opposite way. Either way, Story and McFrederick, what a throw. Nice job of looking it off to the left side and then hitting Story down the seam. On the OH report, why doesn't he just go straight? Maybe he saw the official to the left and out of the corner of his eye decided, I don't want to go that way. <laughs> Either way, Story gets himself into the end zone. The Arrows strike first. And how important is it to score first on the road? Extra point coming. Isaac Roop comes in to boot it away. Arrows trying to make it seven. Nothing bad snap. Hyder picks it up. He's going to have to run it. He's, got he's it. going to be close, and he's just short of the end zone. Arrows fail on the two-point conversion out of necessity. We'll take a break. Six-nothing. You're listening to Arrows Football on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dead. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Here at Arlen Field, Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne on iHeartRadio having a few technical issues. Sorry for that. We're doing our best to try to remedy that here on the radio. Also over on the OH Report, you can hear our lovely voices and not see our faces. It's the best of both worlds for you folks over there if you need to avoid seeing us. The arrows strike first, Tony, and it's always big to score on the road first. Yeah, especially with the Mansfield senior only giving up, you know, around that 12 to 17 points a game. Uh, they're used to being very aggressive and keeping low scoring. Short kick by the Arrows, grabbed by, I think, Amar David, nope, Zion Brown, who grabs it as the up man around the 32-yard line and then rumbles his way forward. Here's left good field position to start here yeah. for uh, their second possession, Tony. Yeah, almost snuck into a, a bigger kickoff return uh, than that, and we've seen that twice already. You know, once at Mount Zion, you know, we let a, uh, a guy go back for 75 yards and a touchdown. Last week had some problems with kickoff coverage, so we're going to have to watch that against the Tigers. Rock Hill and a shotgun. A little hard count. He got Dennison to jump. Nope, it was Caden Briggs, but he gets back. No call. By the way, you said Mount Zion. You were thinking biblically with Zion oh. Brown who just ran it back, and I think you met Mount Vernon, and that's okay. Hill in the shotgun. Hands it off to who's that? Ricky Mills who gets the carry up to the 44-yard line, and that's a gain of three and a half on first down. Good job by there. It was just not giving up a lot in the middle. You know, in the pregame, I was talking about, you know, that front three and middle linebacker really going to have to secure the inside part and inside run game to let that secondary play defense, uh, pass defense more than coming up and run support. Rock Hill in the shotgun. Two receivers, three receivers to the near and one to the far. Single back is Mills. Hand off to Mills to the 45, and he stood up right away. Nice job, Dakota Pitts up the middle, making a nice play there, an initial stop for the Arrows defensive line. Not much there, maybe a yard, it'll be third down. Yeah, it looks like Mansfield Sr. trying to run a trap play, pulling an offensive guard, not, again, not things that this offensive line for the, the Tigers are really used to doing. They're more of a, of a pass blocking offensive line. Uh, here on third down, they're probably gonna put it in the air. Third down and five. Hill in the shotgun. 
Big Amon Thomas at left tackle. Excellent basketball player as well for the Tigers. He looks bigger this year than he was last year, but in better condition. Strong kid. It's oh. intercepted. Braylon Hyder has it. He's got a chance to go to the house. Makes a man miss. 10, 5, touchdown arrows. Yes, sir. Braylon Hyder sitting in a robber position, so he has flat responsibility. No one's in the flat, so he gets to take away the slant. The thing we were talking about, a big turnover, big touchdown. Hold it on the truck drive over here. The defense needs points. Good job by number 11, putting up six for the defense. Well, this is so far the best eight minutes we've seen of the Arrows all season. Braylon Hyder on that return made Brock Hill miss and just cut it back to the inside all the way back for the touchdown run. A 46-yard interception return for the Arrows, and they're up 12-0. Extra point pending here. We'll see if the Arrows can put this one together. Last one had a tough snap. See if they're kicking or going for it. They might be going for two here after the miss. Yeah. They're going for two. McFrederick in the shotgun, five wide. Arrows faithful, loving it. They came out in droves. Back to pass, looking into the corner of the end zone. He's got spots and he overshoots him. Well, we'll take a break here, but the Arrows have struck twice. 12 to nothing, Ashland on top of Mansfield Senior here on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne, 12 to nothing. Arrows have jumped out on top with a couple of touchdowns, including a defensive one there by Braylon Hyder. It's a short kick, bobbled at the 32, or at the 28, rather, and not much there. Nice coverage there by Brady Welsh back and playing well here for this Arrows squad. Nothing doing. The Arrows come up with a big stop. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Well, you may have heard a little guitar riff. I do play the guitar, but that was not me. My apologies, 12 to nothing. 4.09 to go in the first quarter. Arrows on top of the Tigers. If you're just joining us here on IHAR Radio or over on OH Report, Rock Hill and the Tigers at their own 27 yard line, make it the 28 yard line, first and 10. Handoff, Mills is met immediately at the 30. Short gain, and I think actually that was not Mills. Different running back in there, Tony. 14. Jameer Betty, the sophomore. Well, didn't see him on any carries coming into tonight. Might have had a couple, but I didn't see it. Didn't have him on my three deep. So <laughs> Rock Hill on the shotgun. So Jameer Petty with the carry. And he's still in there in that shotgun, the pistol formation. Four wide for the Tigers. Yeah, very different start for Mansfield here. Six runs, one pass attempt, which was an interception. Hand off to Petty, cuts it back inside. He's got room, 35. Grissinger meets him there at the 36. And brought down around the 37 yard line. And yeah, Tony, we thought we would see more passing. It's early, Yeah, but but. Clearly, Mansfield senior Chokey Bradley says, hey, I see something on tape that maybe I can go after. Yeah, and if you looked at the first four games against Ashland, you know, we, we gave up 200 yards rushing several times, uh, you know, gave up 400 at, at Perkins. So Mansfield's trying to take a care of maybe what they thought was a, a Ashland weakness. Uh, really, again, going back to those first four games, we just played four really good teams. Uh, Mansfield may want to go back to the original game plan. Hill throws a screen on the outside, caught. 
Makes a man miss out to the 40. Now brought down and we'll see where they mark it around the 40. Avion Gross was the receiver. Out to the 40 yard line, not much there. Second down and eight coming up for Hill and the Tigers offense. Even that quick pass play actually you know, runs more like a run play, you know, with two stacked wide receivers out there. You just fire it out there quick and try to get three or four yards, which you did. Stacked twins right, stacked twins left. Out past the numbers to the right. On the far side, Tigers going right to left. Hill hands it off to Petty. Petty gets through the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Brady Welsh in on the tackle, along with Seth Shoemaker at the 41. Nothing doing, one yard, it'll be third down and long. Yeah, Parker Grissom is just doing a great job, you know, taking care of two gaps. You know, the A gaps are being taken care of by tackles. Parker gets B gap on both sides. So when you see a hole arise, you can probably bet that's where the running back wants to go. You make the contact in the middle and bring him down. Hill in the shotgun, pistol formation. Hard count, nothing doing. Looks to the sideline. Coach Bradley and company sending in the sides. Trips right, single to the near side. Petty in the backfield with Hill. Third down. They need seven, the 41. He's going to scramble a little bit, flushed out of the pocket to the right side, throws it out to the 45, caught, and they're out near the 50. He's going to have the first down. Nice little pitch and catch there. Miles Bradley on the catch, and they'll mark it at the 49. Looked like they had Parker Grissner just spying Brock Hill, the quarterback there, you know, watching that Lexington game last week. Whenever Mansfield dropped back to pass, Mansfield finally found some success running the ball, you know, as Brock Hill is a runner. So Ashland obviously making the adjustment to just mirror him and keep a, a guy in to make sure that he doesn't start running the ball. Same formation with that stacked twins right and left. Screen to the near side. Caught at the 46 to the 50. Inside Arrows territory and all the way down near the 40-yard line is Amar Davis. And you see that quickness there by Amar Davis, the sophomore wideout. Yeah, his first catch on the day probably goes for 14. Again, really goes as a running play. We saw last week Ashland really kind of given a big cushion. They continue to give a big cushion against the t these Tigers. You know, even though they're stacked, they're still a five-yard cushion, and the, the safety deep is almost 10 yards deep. So they're going to continue just to throw out there quick and get four or five yards unless Ashland starts to do something different. Short pass to the near side screen again to Davis. Davis to the 35, and you're right, Tony, there it is again. They're stacking twins left, stacking twins right, and they've got a lead blocker built in right away. Yeah, and they're throwing to the short side, so whether that's maybe Brock Hill's capacity, you know, maybe he can't throw far side of the field, but they're, they're shortening the field and just going out quick. Hard count, nothing doing there again. Sometimes they like to do that. I like to see, or I see offenses do this a few times around, then they'll pump fake and then throw the deep ball too. Yeah, and they like to even do a counter off it. So they'll, they'll fake it out to one of the wide receivers and hand it to the running back right up the middle. Uh, so yeah, this is all building towards a future play. Betty in the, or Hill in the shotgun, looking, looking, scrambles near side, good pressure. Bartholomew had him and missed him. 30, 25, he's got trouble. Uh-oh, 15, 10. Inside the five, and we'll see what the call is. He's near the pylon. No referee was there. They're just going to spot him wherever he thinks he went in. I think he's just short. I haven't seen a signal yet. But I see the kicking unit coming out, but we never saw a signal. Well, I guess it's a touchdown, and the officials don't have to signal anymore, they're, they're, apparently. But that's a touchdown, I believe. I'm with you, Brandon. The officials and, never signaled, Tony. No, no official, no line judge, no deep judge, no umpire ever gave a signal. So apparently, you just heard the extra point. Yeah, well, the touchdown called by Chokey Bradley and the Tigers <laughs> staff. Well done, gentlemen. Extra point pending. Put will kick it away, and it is up, and it's good. So seven there, and it's 12-7. We'll keep it here with 112 to 117 to go, rather, in the first quarter, Tony, and a quick strike offense there, a little over three minutes on that drive for the Tigers. Now the Arrows will get the ball back. But if you're if you're if you're the Tigers offensively, you, you've now found something. Yeah, you, you found that throwing the ball out quick, you can probably pick up five or six. Um, more importantly, you know, unfortunately for Ashland, just missing three or four tackles there, that probably should have only gone, that should have been a sack for a two yard loss. Uh, but missed tackle in the backfield, um, goes for another 30 yards uh, as a runner for Brock Hill. So a evasive little runner. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to continue just to, to spy him uh, as a defen defensive unit. Arrows and Tigers have met 77 times before tonight. And they have tied 30, they have not tied 37 times. They have tied three times 
and each team has won 37 times. So not surprising with these teams getting together that you might see a competitive game regardless of what the records are. Arrows come in two and four, two game winning streak. Tigers come in four and two off a win last week, 23 to 14 over Lexington. Tigers will boot it away right to left. Sean put, booting it from his own 40. It's a squib kick. Coming up to grab it is Trey Boyd at the 26. Gets outside to the 35 and out to the 37. 11-yard return for Trey Boyd, where the Arrows will have another shot at it on offense. I kind of like these uh, LED balloons going on. Oh, on yeah, on, on the far sideline. Side I like that. I'm not sure what they are, but they're elongated balloons, almost like animal balloons with LED lights in them. But they're not, they're not orange. I would expect them to be orange like the Tigers' colors, but they are cool. And a little purple. It's like a, a little bit like a lightsaber over there. And you yeah. can see it on the OH report. Uh, Landon McFrederick, three for four for 65 yards and a touchdown so far. McFrederick in the shotgun. Sidecar to each side. Hand off to spots. Counters back to the near side. And he is brought down at the 40-yard line. But it's a couple yards. Three-yard gain. Lala Owens on the tackle, six foot five, 220 pound defensive lineman, sophomore. That's a big kid there on the end. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get bigger, right? You know, as a sophomore, just being at 15 years old, he's gonna continue to hit the weight room and fill out the next couple of years. Five wide, spots in motion, settles in with McFerrin. Looks like pressure coming from the outside. Second down and six from the arrows, 41. Going left to right. 35 seconds to go in the first quarter, eight on the play clock. Middle of the field's gonna be open again. I have to snap it, here we go. Play action, looks to the near side and Maffitt, he had him and he rushed it. Incomplete at the 45. Gross on the coverage for the Tigers. Looked like uh, Elias Owens coming from the outside. Lala, maybe? That's Lala, that's my man, the big fella, 6'5", 220. I just like the name Lala. I don't have a cool nickname like that. I mean, I think you can have any nickname you want when you're 6'5", 211, <laughs> right? You, that's, that's really, uh, I don't like that. You're discriminating against me because I'm 5'9", on a good day. McFrederick in the shotgun. <laughs> nope, play action, looked at Maffitt, pressure. He's going to have to roll out near side, gets away from it. He's going to have to throw it downfield. He's got oh. a man tipped off of Spots' hands. Story was in the area as well, incomplete. A lot of contact, you know, I, I think he was actually going to Story over the top of Spots. Spots, you know, put a hand up to try to get it, but... Yeah, defender coming in, you know, pretty close to maybe a pass interference call, but clean field. Just listen to the arrows faithful out in front of us. They did not like the non-call there. And a tough no call. The arrows left to boot it away after jumping out 12 to nothing. Tigers have sort of pulled the momentum back, Tony. Boot away this time. Yeah, Isaac Group's kind of your, your bigger leg kicker. You know, we saw him out there warming up, probably putting the ball 50 yards, 55 yards in the air. So, you know, being at your own 40, uh, want to try to put it inside the 20. Gets the punt away, just barely. Good pressure. It's short. It's going to gonna bounce around the 35, and it'll take an arrow's roll inside the 30. And sort of turn right at the 28-yard line where the Tigers will take over with one second left on the game on the first quarter. So, each week throughout the high school sports season, we will select the iHeartRadio Athlete of the Week. Presented by the Neil Cady Insurance Agency of Ashland and Norwalk. Specializing in auto, home, life, and business insurance. Get a free quote, neilcadyinsurance.com. That's Neil, K-A-D-E-Y, insurance.com. See photos and read about all of our athletes at wncoam.com. Tigers' offensive line is big, Tony. Seeing those guys jog out here, much bigger than the defensive line for the Arrows in that 3-4. 3-2-6 is more like it, really, for the Arrows with one second on the play clock on the Time game out clock. Tigers. Timeout, Tigers have to burn one as they were not out here in time. With a second. With one second left in the play clock, the play clock was about to expire, and they'll burn a timeout. So we'll keep it here with one second remaining in the first quarter. Arrows, Tony struck first, and back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, and now you do feel like a little momentum has shifted back to Mansfield Senior. Yeah, it seemed like Ashland came out, you know, pretty strong. Had, had a great punt, you know, pinned them inside the five-yard line, got the ball back. 
uh, nice you know, 30 yard touchdown pass over the middle, came back out with the interception in for another touchdown. And then Mansfield seemed to put a drive together, you know, no real big plays. Uh, all their passes were just, you know, quick passes. Brock Hill for Mansfield senior quarterback went four for six passing, just 27 yards, you know, so he's not really pushing the ball up the field. They're just taking what Ashland's giving them and Ashland's giving them kind of a big bubble cushion. They're trying to stop the run and make them one dimensional, which I think is the right strategy. But now they're going to have to come out and say, not only do we need to stop the run, but we also just can't let you throw it out there for eight yards every time you want to. Tigers football at the 28, going right to left here. Hand off, nope, keeper Hill, play action, keeps it and runs it himself out to the 36 yard line, gain of eight. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more. The arrows up 12 to seven over the Tigers here on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dead. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Order if you told him before the game they'd be up 12 to 7 after the first one, and they are. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne bringing you the action on iHeart Radio, as well as our friends at the OH Report. Start of the second quarter, Tigers going left to right with the football. Second down and two at the 36. Evades Posse, and Hill throws it down field to Gross. First down and more inside the 40. Now the 30, and pushed out of bounds. Just barely Braylon Hyder saves a touchdown around the 25 yard line. Big pickup there of 39 yards for the Tigers. Yeah, two, another two big missed tackles. Hasse on the quarterback, you know, just couldn't quite bring him down. Colton Johnson there at the end then too, just trying to put a shoulder in, into the receiver and push him out of bounds. You're gonna have to wrap him up. These receivers aren't just gonna go down with a, a nudge. Well, Gross is a big kid, <laughs> there's no doubt. He's going to Charlotte play football, 6'1", 215. No, they don't give out scholarships to anybody. Yeah. Here we go, first down and 10. Mansfield Senior coming out big again. Yeah, 6'1", 215, both sides of the field. Wildcat, Gross has it, going to run left. And he just barrels over one of the, it's Colin Rohr. He just barreled over at the 20 and pushes himself forward inside the 15 for a first down. And Gross says, excuse me, I will take this in for a first down, young man. Big hit. Yeah, I mean, I, you, Colin Rohr popped back up, seems to be okay. He took the worst of that one. Gross just ran him over. 11.03 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 at the 13. Full house back there. And it's gonna be another direct snap. Lamar Davis has it to the 15 and down to the 10. He went backward first and then pushed himself forward to the 10 yard line, gain of three. Yeah, second Wildcat, second different Wildcat just in this possession uh, in a row. Obviously, Mansfield Senior finding something from the first quarter that they wanted to try to exploit, having success here two times in a row. Now Brock Hill will come back in from the sideline. Lamar Davis looks to be checking out. Play clock running down to 15. 10 minutes approaching. Tigers trying to take the lead, down five, 12 to seven. Arrows with a couple of touchdowns, a botched extra point and a failed two point conversion. Hill with a keeper, goes to run behind the right guard. He's inside the five, he's got a first down. Not a wildcat run, but a quarterback design run. He had no intentions of throwing the ball there. You know, kind of dropped back, looking like he was gonna pass, but he fully knew he was gonna tuck it and run right up the middle. Gain enough for another first down, first and goal. Yeah, you know, first and goal for the Tigers who are now marching down the field at will. Yeah, not just in small plays, but in, you know, big pieces of 15 and 20. That one goes for 12. 
And off the right side, and it is a touchdown. I think that's Ricky Mills. It is. Mills is in for the touchdown, and the Tigers have taken the lead for the first time here tonight. 13 to 12. Sean Putt will come in to boot the extra point. So the Tigers, after jumping out 12 to nothing, have given up, I should say, the Arrows, after jumping up 12 to nothing, have given up 13 straight to the TY Tigers. Extra point coming. Hold is good, kick is away, and it's good. 14-12, we'll keep it here. 9.40 to go in the first half, Tony. And now Coach Cheater and the Arrows really need a response. Yeah, if nothing else, they need to find something that's sustained on offense. Three and out will just put your defense back into another you know, problematic scenario. You need to give this defensive time, uh, coaching staff some time to, to make some adjustments to say, hey, how are they taking advantage of us? Obviously, they're doing some wildcat and QB run. So how do we accommodate that and find some ways to change it up? You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. 14 to 12, Tigers on top of the Arrows here. 9.40 to go in the second quarter. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne this bringing will be, you all the action. This will be kickoff number three, and we've seen a, a pooch kick already and, and a squib kick. So what, what are you calling here for number three? Probably another squib, mostly because I just like the word squib. There was a kid who went to my high school, or my friend's high school, I should say. His last name was Squib. So it always reminds me of him, All right, Mr. Squib. I can't remember that kid's first name. That just shows you I'm getting old. Ball going to get booted away. 9.40 to go here in the first half. Put is going to it's sort of in between the squib, and it goes off the hands of Colton Johnson, but he goes back and grabs it at the 12. Trouble for the Arrows, and he brings it back to the 20, and the Arrows avoid a disaster there. And a lot of spin on that ball. It was a weird kick. Yeah, anytime the ball hits the ground, you know, one or two times, like all of a sudden you don't know where it's going to go. Just shoots right past Colton's hands. Nothing worse than turning your back on the oncoming kickoff team, picking it up, turning around to see a, you know, a wall of orange. <laughs> so good job just getting what you, you can get and get the offense on the field. Arrows with a big possession as Landon McFrederick heads back into the huddle. Demarion Dennison out there right now on the offensive line. Seth Will. As Shoemaker. It, as expected, we've seen Mansfield bring a lot of pressure. You know, they you know, line up with a three-man front, but they're really bringing five and six almost any time Ashland goes back to pass. Hand off to Spots, cuts through the left hole, and immediately that hole goes away, and Leo Hess with a big tackle. So not much there. Yeah, carry number five for spots, just nine yards. So not a lot going on right now for the Ashland running game. Uh, going to either have to find something to find a way to open up some holes or just go back to putting the ball in the air. Frederick in the shotgun as normal. Four wide, one man tight on the end. Back to pass. Looking downfield, he's going to launch it up on a go route for Colton Johnson. Got Caught. it, he's gone. Touchdown, Arrows. Are 20, you kidding me? 10, 5. 78 yards, clean field. Yeah, that's just saying, hey, buddy, you go deep. I'm going to chuck it to you, and I think you're going to outrun him, and he did. That's, nice throw and catch. That is old school backyard football right there, <laughs> Tony Van Dyne. I've been teaching my son, he's nine years old, go, different routes. Number one is the go route, right? The fly route, because it's just fun to do. You go deep, and I'm going to throw it to you. Hey, good job by the Arrows. Take Colton Johnson can fly. Man, can he run. Yeah, and he hasn't had a whole lot of catches this season. You know, we actually saw him probably be more productive as far as numbers last year. Uh, but when he strikes, he can strike quickly. And we saw it here in the second quarter. Great throw by McFrederick. Led him perfectly in stride down that far sideline going right to left. And Roop will come out to kick the extra point. Try to make it 19 to 14. It's up and it's blocked. So low kick, no good. We'll take a break. 19 to 4, 18 to 14, rather. Arrows on top here on iHeartRadio. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. 
We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. Whitaker Myers Group has been a local trusted advisor since 1869, serving families in Ashland, Richland, and Wayne County. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt-free. With offices in Ashland, Mansfield, Worcester, Columbus, and South Carolina, we have advisors that are ready to help you begin your journey to financial success. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. We're back at Arlen Field, and the Arrows and the Tigers in a good one here, Tony. It's 18 to 14, the Arrows with a 78-yard touchdown. McFrederick to Colton Johnson, and they've taken the lead right back. It was an answer, a squib kick up front. Coming up to grab it is one of the Tigers up man at the 28. Makes a man miss, it's Zion Brown, and he's up to the 34-yard line. Trey Boyd gets up a little gimpy and hobbles off to the sideline. Good tackle there by Brady Welsh. You know, missed a game or two with a, with a bad shoulder. Uh, good to see him in there playing full speed. The arrows. We talked about needing an answer, Tony. <laughs> and how about that for an answer after giving up th 14 unanswered points to come back with a big touchdown? Yeah, it felt, felt like the, the momentum changed once again here in the stadium. You know, it seemed like the Tigers were really going to take over this first half. You know, after giving up 12 points, Mansfield Sr. comes back and puts up 14. So good job by Ashland staying aggressive, taking the shots down deep. That's what they needed to do. I said they needed at least six plays over 15. That definitely counts as one of them. Hill on the shotgun. Hands it off to Mills up the middle, not much there. Maybe a yard or two. By the way, the center right guard, right tackle for this Tigers offensive line goes 270, 283, 10. And it's so, such, a, such a dichotomy to their defensive line, which is small and mobile and quick. They're definitely saying, hey, our big boys are going to be pass blockers and run blockers on the offensive side. Markedly different, you, yeah. you know, size-wise, even the, the, yeah, the left tackle, left guard as well. You got Amon Thomas, who's a big kid, 280 at left tackle. Looks like he could really be a potential stud on that offensive line. Yeah, and sometimes you have that pulling side and you have the power side. That When you want to just get one or two yards, you go right. And when you want to do a little bit of finesse and boot out and have a mobile offensive line, you go left. You go, you go to the other side. So, again, that side, you actually have the left guard pulling and doing the, the, the athletic stuff and the right side just saying, hey, you just fire off and move the line. Well, and they had it right there running behind the left guard pulling out. That was Carmelo Smith at 230 pounds, and they got another yard there. But it's third down and seven for the Tigers. Big third down stand coming up for the Arrows defensively. And the Tigers need to convert. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Hill in the shotgun, four wide. Looking left, looking downfield, throws it to the slot. It's gross, caught at the 45, wrapped up right past Whoa, the first down marker. Generous spot. A good spot, and they're going to give him the first down. Avion Gross. And the Tigers will move the chains. Yeah, when you go four wide, you have the opportunity just to tell all your receivers just to go run six-yard curls because you need five. So all six of them go out. All four receivers go out and do six-yard curls. Brock Hill does a good job looking across the field, just finds the open one to get the first down. Twins stack left and right again. They throw it to Gross nice. out on the outside left and immediately tackled by Trey Boyd. Back at the 45, a loss of one. Nice job there, wrapping up. Yeah, we've seen that play now maybe four times. That may, be the, may have been the fifth time, just the quick pass out there to the stacked receivers. Trey Boyd, you know, finally figuring it out. Hey, when they fire it out there, you just have to go at check out and go back to the Wildcat. It's Gross in the backfield with Petty and Mills now. They did have Lala Owens in there over there with Gross on the stack far left. Pretty good size over there. It's going to be a keeper for Gross. He's hitting the backfield, in the backfield and gets himself back, well, under the 44, but Welsh blew it up. Grissinger will get credited with the tackle, but Brady Welsh with a big play. I feel like we say it every week, but, you know, when you go Wildcat, you actually have to threaten to throw it sometime. I don't think, you know, I don't think they have any intention to actually throw it, you know, with any other Wildcat guy. So Hill's going to check back in, go back to a standard offensive set. And you got Lala Owen split wide out over there on the far side. It's foot five. 
Hill in the shotgun. Third down and 12. Big one for the Tigers. Arrows bringing a little pressure. Picked up. Hill's going to roll out left. Hyder spotting him. De throws it deep. He's got a man inside the 10. Incomplete. Yeah, just trying to go to Miles Bradley. You know, probably receiver number one for Mansfield Senior. If you're going to give everyone, anyone a shot, why not give the six foot one guy a shot? But falls too high. So that looks like a punting situation. Fourth down and 12. Brock Hill stays in there potentially to boot this one away. A little bit of pressure there by the arrows forced him out. And Braylon Hyder was spying Brock Hill on that play. Yeah, it looks like whether, you know, it's one of the, the linebackers. You know, that time it was uh, Hyder, it's been Grissinger, you know, we've seen Schnitz uh, do it. Um, but they definitely know that Hill will beat you as a runner as he steps back here to kind of boot it away. Nobody's deep. Hill's going to boot it away, and Metzger's trying to run back to get under it, and he's just going to let it bounce at the 20. Inside the 20, and I'm not sure what Mansfield Senior was doing, but Amar Davis, the Amar Davis grabs it in a sophomore mistake. Inside the 20, the ball was going to bounce another 5 to 10 yards. Yeah, when it bounces waist high, you at least let it bounce one more time and see if you can't get a few more yards. But again, sophomore mistake. You know what sophomore means in Greek? Uh, I, it's blank freshman, right? No, it means wise fool. Oh, wise fool. Okay. Sophos meaning knowledge or fool. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Moros. So I'll let you just <laughs> figure out what that one means. That's what I didn't want to say. I, I don't really know what I can cover on <laughs> the Bible also says don't call anybody a fool, so I'm not calling anybody a fool. Nick Frederick in the shotgun, as usual. First down of 10 arrows will have the ball at the 19. Going right to left. Landon four for seven, 143 yards, you know, after that big connection, two touchdowns. Handoff, spots, cuts it back to the right, now back to the middle. He's out to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. Gain of four, four and a half. By the way, you can send any complaints. Care of Margie Tassif over to the station, or Aaron Hines, our good friends at iHeartRadio. I'm not sure about OH, your boy Brian Skronsky <laughs> will take any complaints. Not sure what he'll do with him. Five minutes to go, second down and five to left. McFrederick throws it into the slot. It's off the hands of Johnson, who is hit hard and can't hold on. Big hit there from the defensive back, Ishmael Cameron. Yeah, just a boom, boom play. You know, definitely clean, but whenever you see the ball come, same time the defender does on the big tackle, kind of gets the crowd excited, but no penalties. It was Isaiah Darson actually in on the breakup. My apologies, 23, not 27. McFrederick in the arrows now with third down and five. Five wide, spots in motion. The arrows will reset. 15 on the play clock. 4.59 to go in the first half. Mansfield Senior continues just to play man-to-man, -man, you know, just mirroring guys in motion. They want to put at least six guys in the box trying to go come after Landon here. Showing some blitz. They come up the middle. McFrederick rolls out to the right. He hits Maffitt at the 31, and he's hammered by Bradley right away. Arrows, great job of holding on by Ashton Maffitt because he got leveled by Miles Bradley. Yeah, and if Landon could have gotten that ball out, you know, just a second sooner, Maffitt may have been able to turn it up and not only just make a play, you know, and kind of protect himself, but he wanted to make sure he was getting into first down territory. Landon put it out there. Good catch. Uh, if Ashton can find someone to, to sneak out, you know, behind that first rush, there's a lot of room to run. Good opportunity to maybe run some clock here as well and try to have a nice long drive to finish out the half. The Tigers will get the ball back to start the second half. Yeah, I actually wrote 527 down and, and thought, you know, it'd be great if we could run that thing out. But really, you just want to move the ball consistently. You know, no matter when you put points on the board, that's the most important thing. Shotgun, McFrederick forced out of the pocket, rolls to his right, near side. He's going to tuck it and run, makes the man miss to the 40, and he's wrapped up at the 42-yard line. Well, nice move there, but I think he's going to have the first down. Chains are moving, so a big first down pickup for McFrederick, who made a nice little juke move at the 38 to get himself the first down. Yeah, we're seeing kind of the physicality kind of dial up, and you always see that in uh, rivalry games here between Mansfield Senior and Ashland. A couple of big hits, you know, clean hits from Mansfield Senior, but now you're seeing guys kind of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kind of getting a little extra a little scruff, a little chippy, so referees are going to want to keep an eye on it. Again, nothing that's warranted a penalty yet, nor should it, uh, but something that we'll keep an eye on. 
Five wide as spot splits wide to the right. McFrederick looks, screen to the near 42, 45, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Mark it at the 49, gain of seven. Nice play there. We haven't seen that much this year. Yeah, and I think he had the hole right in the middle. If he would just would have continued to run to, towards the center in that tunnel, he actually had offensive linemen coming down to help him out. But still, good catch, playing the screen. Glad they're listening to the broadcast. Keep listening, guys. I'll keep calling plays from up here. <laughs> He'll see that on tape tomorrow is my guess as well, right? <laughs> he will. <laughs> Big Frederick in the shotgun. Four wide. Single back. Sidecar to the near side. Back to pass. Blitz. Pressure. Screen to the near side. And Spots can't grab it. But I'll tell you what, at that point, it was just a good job to get rid of the football by McFrederick. Yeah, you've got six orange jerseys in the backfield. You know, four just coming head to head against this smaller offensive line. Two more linebackers. They're just pressure saying, we think we can man up your receiver and you'll win a couple of them, but more often than not, we're going to be able to play man-to-man -man defense and overwhelm your quarterback in the backfield. They're down and four, and a big one at the 48-yard line in their own side of the 50. 3.06 to go in the first half. Arrows could really use a conversion. The Tigers need to stop. Big OCC showdown here tonight, a rivalry game. McFrederick, a little option, keeper into Tigers territory. 40, 35, little stutter step, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Put your hands up. 52 yards. Signal's clear this time. Referee, touchdown. <laughs> Landon McFrederick, how do you do? Well done, sir. 52 yards, and the arrows are up 10. Good job by Landon McFrederick. Option left. That's the play. They're bringing a lot of pressure. Landon just makes a great job here. You know, OH report, you're going to see it cutting back to the left, making just a, it's a sprint, then at that point to the pylon. Second time we've seen a, a close play on that pylon. Good job by Ashen taking the lead and extending it even more. Lamar Davis was the last possible hope for the Tigers. And McFrederick said, no thanks. And now the arrows are going to go for two. Second try tonight, 0 for 1 well, so far tonight. the first one was sort of unintentional, and then the second one was a deliberate one. You're right, McFrederick back to pass pressure. He has to throw it away in a hurry. He is hit hard, incomplete. For so McFrederick goes down hard, but he's OK. Seth Will helps him up. The arrows fans giving McFrederick in this arrows offense a standing ovation here in Arlen Field. 2.54 to go in the first half. Yeah, 24-14, good job by Ashton, you know, extending, again, extending the lead. Uh, maybe something that we're going to watch, you know, four points we've left on the field, you know, extra points either missed by a bad snap, two-point conversion that got failed. So up by 10, you're probably feeling good if you're Cedar and the coaching staff. You could be up by 14. Uh, we got about 2.54 here, so Mansfield Senior can clearly score quickly. We saw that, uh, so we're going to have to see here how Mansfield Tigers play this. So the arrows have four touchdowns and no conversions. So far, that's correct. Yeah, I six mean, fours. I, I, I can't, right, I had to do the math to think back, right. like, okay, <laughs> six times three, four. Yeah. Uh, but we have not converted once. We had a bad snap, and Hyder almost made it in. Almost made it in. We, we threw it to the back of the end zone uh, for Metzger, just overthrown. Third one was blocked. We, we tried to kick it, uh, and the big guy, six foot four, comes in the middle and gets a pole on it, blocks it. Uh, and this time, again, going for two. Quick slant, falls incomplete. So, well, yeah, we'll see if those make a big difference in this final. I mean, going into the second half, it's, you know, potential for eight points, but at a minimum, four more points. And the Euros, meanwhile, though, up 10 on Mansfield Senior. And the Tigers coming in, the heavy favorite, really, four and two overall and playing well and have beat some really good teams, including North Canton Hoover. Tough loss against West Holmes, who's just beaten up on everybody. And the Euros will kick it away here. And it's booted deep. Isaac Roop says, I'll take it. Inside the 10 to the 6 is Miles Bradley. 15, Good 20. Job. Brady, Brady Welsh says, I got it. Boy, is he the heart and soul out there half of this time. <laughs> he plays his heart out out there. Yeah, I was on the sideline uh, at Clyde. Uh, he, he was injured with that shoulder, uh, and he wasn't dressed. He was in you know wrestling shorts and some sort of tank top, uh, and he was pacing up and down, and you can just tell that he is an energy ball. Uh, he loves playing football. He loves wrestling. The guys on the field definitely take his lead when emotionally, uh, and he's clearly number 33 in this game focused in. Arrows now move to the defensive side, and here comes Brock Hill and the Tigers' defense play clock at 10. They're late getting out on the field again. Four wide to the left, single to the near side. They're going to have quad to hurry. Left, quad left. They get it. They throw into the slot left side, and met oh. immediately Caden Schmitz with a big tackle. Lost maybe back to the 20. Wow, that's a generous spot. They're going to give him three yards at the 20-yard line. 
Caden Schmitz. Yeah, not just wrapping up, but kind of driving him backwards and driving him into the ground. Uh, another emotional play by Ashland. Good job. Uh, Mansfield Tigers coming out here quads right now. Second down and seven at the 20, going left to right. 2.20 to go in the first half. Hill back to pass. Now he tucks it and runs left, and he goes out of bounds at the 25, but picks up five. It'll be third down and two with 2.11 to go. They came out quads right, but really there were only two routes. There was a bubble route to the right, you know, one guy running a bubble route with three defenders, and one guy on the far side who was at number eight, Amar Davis, just going deep. So it looks complex with five receivers out there, but there's really only two options. Uh, Hill takes the third option and just runs at that time. Here it is again, quads to the near side, single receiver to the far side. And the shotgun, Brock Hill, looking and barking out the play call to the line. Hard count, keeper up the middle. He's got the first down and then some, and he's brought down at the, well, not really brought down, but wrapped up at the 30 by Braylon Hyder and company for the Arrows. First down and 10 as we approach the two-minute mark. Yeah, 24-14, Ashland's still on the lead. Yeah, Mansfield Senior's got at least you know 70 yards here to go. They're going to want to go with a little bit of tempo as the clock's running under two minutes. Now quads right in a diamond set. And the shotgun, Brock Hill. Looking, quads in a yeah, little box over here, diamond to the near side, like you talked about in the pregame, some of the different formations. Back to pass, looks left instead. He's got a man, it's Amar Davis, makes a man miss to the 40. Makes another man miss, and he trips up at the 43. First down, that'll stop the clock temporarily. Hey, this portion of Arrow Football on WNCO is brought to you by America's Home Place. Custom home builders at Township Road 405 and Route 30 in Jeromesville. Build a better future at americashomeplace.com. That quad's right, you know, was really just a smoke screen to try to get Amar Davis to the left, open and free. And Isolated, athlete. right? Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, just some candy. Back to the pass. He throws it to Gross near side, caught at the 48. He's into Arrows territory at the 45. Another first down. That'll move the chains and stop the clock with 109 to go in the first half. Yeah, now at the 45-yard line, Ashland's going to want to tighten up a little bit. You know, you want to give a little bit of space when they've got 70 yards to go. But now that they're, you know, within 45 yards, you know, Mansfield Tigers kicker is probably good from 35 yards in, so they got 10 or 15 yards more to go, but they're getting into that range where they might be able to have a chance to kick some kick here for some points before half. 50 seconds to go. Clock running in the first half. First and 10 at the 44. Back to pass. Hill's looking deep. Throws it over, looking for Amar Davis. Caught at the 24, makes a man miss, and he's tripped up by Johnny Metzger at the 15-yard line. Might get a timeout here. They've got two left over on the T.Y. Tiger sideline, and Chokey Bradley says, yes, I'm going to listen to Coach Wells, and I'm going to call a timeout up there. Bradley in his 12th season, 77 wins to just 46 losses. So first down and 10 coming up with 38 seconds at the 15, Tony. Yeah, that last play going for 30 yards. You know, uh, good use of a timeout just to say, hey, our offensive line doesn't want to run up there and have to, like, try to get a play call. You can kind of slow it down. But, yeah, Mansell is obviously looking for seven points here. They don't want to settle for a field goal. Uh, with 38 seconds to go, you probably still have time for three plays. You know, they're, they're a passing team. Um, a quick slant, some fades, uh, still a lot of time, and with an extra timeout, uh, your whole playbook is still an option for you. Big crowd and a big moment here coming up. Some big, big moments already here tonight. Some big plays for both teams. Definitely, here. definitely feels different though, right? A, a, a ten-point lead versus a three-point lead uh, definitely just feels different going into halftime. So we'll see if Ashland can't tighten up. Quads right in a line and a false, false start, start by the Tigers as the Arrows will deke move on the fall on the defensive side. That'll push him back. Yeah, senior Aaron Wade just can't hold it. That means it'll be first down and 15, pushes him back to the 20. I haven't had many penalties. Was that the first one? First one of the game. How about that? Uh, we had a, a, a bad kick. Kick in front of Yeah, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> kick out of bounds, right? Yeah. All right, Brock Hill, the Ontario transfer last year, in a quarterback here tonight and has done a tremendous job. Back to pass, looking. Pressure coming up the middle, forced out of the pocket, throws it into the near side, caught at the 12, down to the 5, and into near the end zone. Ball's loose. We'll see what the call is. I think he was in before he I fumbled. I think he was in, too. It was Malachi Mays. Haven't seen a signal yet, but, but we haven't seen be. a signal yet this tonight. They're going to talk about it. Oh, boy. Wow, what a play. So Malachi Mays catches it, 
gets himself near the end zone. You see Hill throws it. Hill uh, Mays catches it at the 15, gets himself down near the end zone, and it's a question as to whether or not he was down or not at the goal line. I think he was in, Tony. Yeah, I would say so, too, but Braylon Hyder just laid the wood to him right on the goal line, and the ball did come out. The question is, everyone knows this from watching enough NFL and college football games, you just have to break the line, but the problem is, here's the call. Fumbled, back. fumbled on the one-yard line is the call, wow. and they're covered by the arrows. Oh, my goodness! So the arrows come out on top in this sort of scenario. A tough call there. If you're watching on OH Report, you get another look at it. Malachi Mays got himself down near the end zone. Maybe the ball was loose as he got hit. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, again, we talk about not wanting to critique the officials too much because they have a hard job to do. I'm not going to critique them. It comes out on the good side for the arrows. Arrows fans going crazy out here. <laughs> Well done. Arrows are excited, and that's a huge turn of events with 19 seconds left. The arrows, we talked about it, Tony. You're either going to have a three-point lead or a 10-point lead, and it looks like they're going to have at least a 10-point lead going into the half now. Yeah, it looks like they went back and put a, a minute 25 back on the game clock. The game clock kept running kind of in, in some of the chaos. Just 25, you meant. Oh, 25. Yeah, 25 seconds, yep. Oh, the, the zero looks like zero, a one. Zero's cut off a little bit. Yep, it's 25 seconds. There you go. Hand off to Spots coming around the end, around to the 20. And he is wrapped up by Lala Owens at the 24-yard line. And Spots does that little flip to get himself up. You know, that, this, should do it. that should do it. The arrows with 10 seconds remaining here in the first half have narrowly avoided some interesting plays that have been the benefactor of a sort of a toss-up call there to almost end the half, Tony. If you're if you're Coach Cedar going into the half here, you got to be really happy with what has happened. You're up 24 to 14, and it could be more, you know, but you also got a little bit fortunate there to end the half. Yeah, Mansfield Senior's just given up, you know, one game they gave up 40. Uh, uh, but other than that, they've only given up games of 17, 14, and 12. So to say you put up 24 against Mansfield Senior in the half, Coach Cedar's got to be ecstatic, you know. More importantly, they've kind of taken care of uh, the throwing game. You know, they've got a little bit of options. Uh, they finally got something going, you know, on the last couple of drives. But for the most part, the Arrows not just are winning numerically on the scoreboard, but they're kind of winning the emotional game right now, and the momentum's leaning towards Ashland. Well, we talked about it in the pregame. These teams clearly don't. You know, these schools generally don't get along all that well. We're too close to each other. They're is close what it is. to each other, right? And there's a lot of differences between the cities, but it's like a it's like a, a cousin that lives nearby that you don't want to lose to. So these squads, whenever they face off against each other, I know it's cliched. You say throw out the records, but you know the arrows clearly have played some tough teams. We talked about that as well. All their their first four opponents have done really well. Yeah, they're all ranked in the top five of their respective regions at this point. Their combined score, their combined record. 20 wins and just four losses. So while Ashland, you know, fans and maybe even the players may have felt a little bit bad about those four first losses, you kind of look back and say, actually, <laughs> those are really good teams. And week five, we got to win. Week six, we got to win. Week seven, at least through the first half, winning decisively against Mansfield Senior Tigers. Arrows and Tigers in a battle here tonight at Arlen Field. 24-14, Arrows are on top as we head to the halftime show. Stay tuned for more here on iHeartRadio. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. Whitaker Myers Group has been a local trusted advisor since 1869, serving families in Ashland, Richland, and Wayne County. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. With offices in Ashland, Mansfield, Worcester, Columbus, and South Carolina, we have advisors that are ready to help you begin your journey to financial success. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting.
Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor. Cool. It's my last year. I'm I'm giving it all all the time. To be honest with you. Yes, Jake loves the game of football, but he's got many other interests as well. He's on the prom and homecoming committees at Jackson Milton High School, in the livestock club, quiz bowl and drama club, along with key club and sad. I just like to do stuff, be active with everybody, socialize, it's fun. Another love is agriculture. I, I I see it as like a good opportunity to. Years ago, your local trip formed to make sure everyone who needed electricity had it. And as time went on, as Thirteen forty. Back here at Orland Field, halftime. Back here at Orland Field, Tigers are in a big showdown here in the OCC. The Arrows on top, 24-14. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne. Tony, interesting first half, and uh, the Arrows 
have really played much better than they did the first four weeks. It seems like they're on a bit of a roll, a couple of wins, and they come in tonight with some, you know, a little bit of momentum, and they've played well so far tonight. As you want to take a look at some of the stats. Yeah, you know, Ashton Arrow's only four first downs, you know, but winning the total yards, 219. Um, you know, doing a good job playing a clean game, most importantly, not turning the ball over, whereas, you know, Mansfield seniors really had a majority of the time. They've actually had 26 minutes of possession to Ashland's nine minutes. Um, passing yards, rushing yards, I think on the OH report, they're, they're a little off, but big story for Mansfield senior uh, turnovers, you know, um, interception on their first drive, return for a touchdown, uh, or second drive, I guess, the first drive was just on the one yard line, but interception, Ashland takes it back, puts up points, and then Ashland really, you know, yards after catch, yards after contact. I said they needed at least six big plays to stay in this game and win it. They've already got four of them. Landon, 52-yard touchdown run. Colton Johnson went for 78 touchdown reception. Sturry had a 37-yard touchdown post. Spots had a nice 21-yard catch to keep a, a drive going for another first down. So from my prediction, they need at least two more big ones. But so far, so good. Uh, four big plays puts you up by 10. And that's going to be the story most of the time. Uh, Mansfield senior though finding some success moving the ball up and down the field uh, fumbled uh, in going into the end zone with under a minute to go there on the second quarter they're gonna get the ball back looking to put points up and change the momentum of this game in quarters three and four the arrows uh, you know the Tigers were driving there if you're just joining us to end the first half and we're about to what looked like uh, they were about to score a touchdown and a tough call that went the arrows way and didn't go the way for the Tigers as it looked like Malachi Mays was, I think it was Malachi Mays now looking back, was stretching into the end zone with the football and probably crossed the plane. It was a very close call. The officials ruled that he had, the ball was coming loose and that's the only thing we couldn't quite see was that maybe the ball was coming loose as he crossed over and at that point they, they gave it to the arrows and so the arrows dodge a bit of a bullet there, but one thing that has stuck out a little bit, the arrows have, the, the one negative I will say for the arrows so far has been the, the special teams so far, extra points. Yeah, and not just the special teams, extra points, I'll even add kickoff or turn coverage, kick coverage, uh, just not miss snap on the first attempt, second touchdown, arrows tried to go for two, unsuccessful, the third touchdown was blocked, so then the fourth touchdown uh, in the second quarter, Ashland tried to go for two again, incomplete pass. So Ashland did leave four points on the board at least. You know, it could be a 28 to 14 game or, or more if, if they went to two for two on some of those. Um, Mansfield Senior also has really been a first half team. You know, so they, they're they used to getting out to big leads. Um, they've actually only scored three points in the fourth quarter all year. Uh, so they're gonna have to flip the script a little bit on their season to say, hey, we're used to coming out big, putting up points, and then just kind of like kicking it into neutral third and fourth quarter and securing the win. But uh, Mansfield but Senior's going to have to do a little bit of uphill digging to come out of this 10-point deficit. If you're Coach Cedar and I told you, hey, coming out of halftime, you're going to be up 24 to 14, you'd take that. Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime you tell me as a half, I, I'm going to take that. But anyway, continue. <laughs> so you're looking at that. You're up 10. What do you do game plan-wise here going into the second half? You, what kind of – what do you expect to see if you're Coach Cedar – uh, from the other side. What do you expect to see Mansfield Senior do any different? Because there were some things. They had some drives moving where they moved the ball against the arrows. Yeah, I, I think defensively, uh, Mansfield Senior is going to put the ball in the air more. You know, I, I think they atypically ran the ball more than they typically do as a team. You know, they've ran the ball 17 times in the first half. I think trying to take advantage of maybe one of the weaknesses that some of the other teams have exploited from Ashland this season. Uh, Ashland's done a good job of not making that an option. Uh, defensively, then, I would expect Mansfield just to continue what they're doing to say I'm going to bring pressure I think Linen's going to continue to have to make plays under duress find that open receiver because a linebacker's blitzing or because the defensive end didn't check the tight end going out um, big plays are possible against this defense because they are so aggressive Landon McFrederick what were your thoughts on him in the first half how do you feel like he played for the arrows I mean, by the numbers, you know, great, right? Five for 11, 149 yards and two touchdowns, a QB rating of 131. Uh, he probably didn't look, you know, watching him, he didn't look like it was always under control, uh, but he stayed in the pocket more than he usually has. He hasn't thrown balls into coverage or into like tight areas. He's just kind of taking what the Tigers have been given. Only been sacked once, you know, back in the first quarter. So Mansfield Sr. had five sacks last week, um, have about 10 on the season. So they've had some success with these athletic linebackers and defensive linemen getting to 
the quarterback and bringing them down. Um, so Landon's done a good job, and I think just play calling has been good, you know. Yeah, take, they've lined up some deep. really good screens on some blitzes, and, you know, it, it seems like they've been ready for the blitz by Mansfield Senior, other than, was there one or two sacks, maybe one sack only I think for just one senior, sack. Senior, right. Yeah. On yeah. the first drive. Uh, I believe first or second drive was early on anyway. Early on, yeah. They yeah. seem to like, have figured that out. Um, yeah, there, there always is going to be a defensive end coming almost free. You know, you, you can't block everyone. Uh, and as an offensive line schematic, you kind of take that first threat. So you block from the inside out. So if someone's coming in the A-gap, you're going to block him, which means the guys that are typically going to be free are guys on the ends. Uh, and Layden's done a good job either running away from them or just getting the ball out quick. Halftime here at Arlen Field. Arrows on top, 24-14. Each week throughout the high school sports season, we will select the iHeartRadio Athlete of the Week. Presented by the Neil Cady Insurance Agency of Ashland and Norwalk. Specializing in auto, home, life, and business insurance. Get a free quote, neilcadyinsurance.com. That's Neil, K-A-D-E-Y, insurance.com. See photos and read about all of our athletes at wncoam.com. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne bringing you the action here. Hey, you know, the Arrows scored 24 points, Tony, but they were never in the Shakely Mechanical Red Zone. It's been the story all year, right? So like, they, they scored, scored from far out. They, they <laughs> scored from 52 yards out, 78 and 37, just skipping over that red zone. Yeah, they were in the green zone. So, hey, a couple of times there earlier on, just so we get this in to make sure that we take care of our good friends over at Shakely Mechanical. They were in the green zone, the red zone. Well, things are starting to cool down here in the October, first night of October, and I think the heat will be on at my house, but uh, as things are warming up, at Shakely Mechanical Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling in Ashland for all of your needs there in the Ashland and Mansfield area. The Arrows will be booting it away here to start the second half, and the Tigers, some dangerous returners in their arsenal back there. We'll see if they send down Isaac Roop to boot it away. I think so. The arrows, not much wind here at all. The flag is complete in the east end zone. I had to think which direction was each east and which was west. We started off in the press box on the other side and got a little, little move, a little, to get a, a little re, uh, what a change of scenery. I, I said we were invited to our own private box. Yeah, we were invited to our own private box here at Mansfield Senior. And we're thankful to be here broadcasting high school football on iHeart Radio and with our good friends at the OH Report. It's a family affair. Glad to have them all here. 24 to 14 arrows with an opportunity to get themselves to three and four, Tony. And one of the things we talked about in the pregame was the arrows right now would be in the playoffs if they started today and a win today would really solidify their chances of making the playoffs this season. Yeah, and their record doesn't reveal that they would probably be rated as high as they are. But again, their first four losses coming against really good teams that are ranked really high. So that actually in the math of it all says those losses don't count as bad as a loss against a bad team. You lost against a really good team. So yeah, a win tonight. Lexington next week will go to Lexington. Uh, Lexington's probably in the middle of the OCC at this point. Um, good chance to win there. Yeah, and at that point, four and four, you're probably making the playoffs, regardless of the last two games with West Holmes and Worcester. Arrows will boot it away, going right to left. And the visiting white with black and orange trim. It's a squib kick, grabbed at the 23. That's out. Miles Bradley now to the 25, 27, and he is wrapped up. Nice job there on special teams by Caden Van Tilburg, the junior special teams ace, comes up with a big tackle, and the Tigers will start at the 27-yard line. Yeah, squib kick just picked up, you know, ran back out to about the 25, 26-yard line. Better than kicking it out of bounds and get, putting them out at the 35, so probably less of a threat to squib kick it and get them down quickly than to let one of these weapons on the Tigers team have a chance at, and run at it. Just underway here in the second half with the Arrows and Tigers. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's a beautiful weather night. It is awesome. Windows open, doors open here in the press box. Safe as can be in the shotgun. Brock Hill trips left, single to the near side. Handoff, Mills up the middle. He's got room 35, and he makes a couple of arrows go down along the side, and he's up to the 40-yard line. 13-yard pickup, Ricky Mills, and the 
Tigers are quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, a little bit faster of a pace than we saw in the first half. Uh, now, you know, running backs trading out here, but just a run right up the middle, kind of going back to their original game plan. Can Ashland stop us just running right up the middle? That's Jameer Petty checking into the backfield for the Tigers. Hand off to Petty around the right edge, and he is brought down immediately. Brady Welsh gets him in the backfield, loss of one. Coming from the other side of the line, just chasing him down. Welsh, Welsh does a good job just continuing to, to follow the play when the running back kind of slows down a little bit to try to find the hole, gets caught from behind. Shotgun still. Demarion Dennison checks out. He's playing hurt. That torn ACL, and he is working as hard as he can here tonight. Sure, he's frustrated. Keeper, Hill, up the middle to the 44, maybe the 45. On second down and 11, a gain of, kind of. five or six. <laughs> Big pile just kind of <laughs> getting pushed left and right. No whistle. I think the referees didn't want to call it dead, but probably should have blown it a few seconds ago. It'll be third down and six. Senior with a big third down here early in the third quarter. Ricky Mills in the backfield now. Fetty out. Mills in. Trips left. Single receiver to the near side. Arrows with three down linemen. Eight. Back. Trey Boyd, the near side corner. Colton Johnson split wide on the corner spot. Running down some play clock. Back to pass. Looks left. Pushed out of the pocket by Welsh. Going to tuck and run. He's going to get the first down and more. 40, 35. Caden Schmitz wraps him up and brings him down around the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. That's a gain of 23 on third down and six. Ashland secondary just kind of sliding to the right there, not wanting to give up a big pass play. And what opens up then is a big hole in the middle. Hill just kind of puts his foot in the ground, cuts it back, takes it for 20. Twins left, twins right. New lineman comes in at right tackle for Bansfield Senior, and that's Jameer Dotson. Back to that. 4, 260. Back to that stacked wide receiver left and right. Uh, they like just to fire it out there and kind of use it as a running play. Hill, keeper. Mills blocks in front of him, and a couple yards around the left side. And he gets to the 31, gain of two, second down and eight. Good job again by Parking Grissinger from that Mike linebacker right in the middle, just forcing things back to the middle and bringing them down. He's played a lot better at behind him. A stack formation either side for the wideouts. It's a screen out to the left side off the hands and incomplete intended for Jaante O'Brien. Yeah, he stands out there at 6'2", 175. So overshooting him is you know, a little bit of a miss. Uh, more importantly, brings up third and 10. Good chance here for Ashland to get off the field. Ricky Mills checks out, and they're going to go true five wide receivers. Third down and eight at the 31. 8.45 to go in the third quarter. Arrows up 10. Brock, Brock Hill did a lot of running out of this formation against Lexington. Uh, you know, you see all the receivers left and right, and all of a sudden the quarterback right up the middle might be available. Hard count. Now Hill takes the snap. Looks, he's going to launch it deer, deep down the right sideline. Incomplete. Not even close. Hey, find all the scores from Football Friday Night on the North Central State College scoreboard at our website, wncoam.com. Brought to you by North Central State College. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. Big fourth down call coming up for Coach Brett. I'm gonna pull up that scoreboard while you're talking here and check, out, <laughs> check on some local sports. Shelby was up 13 to nothing on Galleon at the half, courtesy of Aaron Hines. Brock Hill in the shotgun. Tr of quads left, single near side. So five wide out, fourth down and eight. Big play here, Tigers going for it. Hill throws an out route, caught on the near side and wrapped up and pushed out of bounds, I should say, at the 18, but not before they get the first down. Big one there for Amar Davis from Brock Hill. Amar Great Davis. Throw. Yeah, Amar Davis has just been kind of going on those deep go routes, you know, trying to get him deep. Finally, he runs an out route. Uh, and Colton Johnson there maybe on, on the cover, just, you know, not wanting to give up the big play. Unfortunately, gave up the first down, pick up about 15. Tigers now probably sitting on the 19-yard line uh, in their own red zone. Crestview Cougars 42-13 over South Central Trojans. Can't wait to get one of their games with you this year, Tony. I'm hoping we get one of their playoff games at some point. It's a Wildcat or the Wild Tiger. Low snap. 
and a flag as well. So the Tigers fell on it. Gross and Mills were back there, and Mills fell on it. But they're caught on the center. Oh, there you go. Jaden Jones, 310-pound center. That's a big kid for a freshman as well. So that'll move him back five yards. First down and 15, now at the 23. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Still Wildcat. It's Gross back there. With Mills to his right. Keeper, right side, cuts it back to the left. Now tries to cut it back to the left, and Seth Shoemaker grabs him and pushes him down. Caden Schmitz comes in as well. Great job by the senior defensive lineman, Seth Shoemaker. Yeah, good job just kind of holding him up. Wasn't able to actually bring him down, but you know, enough of a, of, a, of a slowdown, just kind of grabbing the jersey and giving him a big hug until your friends can get around him enough for the referee to blow the whistle. Not really an exciting football play, but. <laughs> when when we were young, we did that to people we didn't like. We would hold him up and not let anybody tackle him until you somebody. Strip the ball. Well, sure, there you go. Brock Hill with the shotgun. <laughs> I meant so more people could come pile on oh, back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Can't do that anymore. Brock Hill will launch it down the right sideline and incomplete. He had a man open. It was Amar Davis once again. Good coverage by Trey Boyd, who's talking a little smack down that sideline. I'd be careful out there right now. It's going to be a big third down coming up. You don't want to draw a penalty. Yeah, I think that pass was going to land out of bounds, even you know if Amar Davis could have gotten free. But yeah, Trey Boyd's done a good job just kind of mirroring that solo receiver you know tigers going quads four receivers to the left or the right which leaves one guy kind of on the opposite side and yeah trey boyd's did a good job tonight just manning up being one-on-one -on -one. arrow showing blitz third down and 13. hill back to pass pressure pushed out of the pocket rolls right he's gonna tuck it nice tackle coming in from trey boyd on the outside and he trips up hill at the 14. Gain of seven, but it'll be fourth down and six for the Tigers. Now they're down 10. They have a good field goal kicker. You could put yourself a field goal. I don't think Coach Chokey Bradley's looking at a field goal unit. Sean Putt is over there on the sideline. Yeah, five for six for the season, 35 long, so he's well within his range, but Mansfield Senior is going to keep their offense out there. Rock Hill, fourth down and five. Keeper up the middle. Hyder comes diving in to help on the stop, and the arrows come up big on the fourth down, and they'll get the ball back. Braylon Hyder darts in from the outside to make the initial hit. Arrows will get it back. So the arrows bend but don't break, much like the last couple weeks defensively as McFrederick comes in for the offense. Yeah, a long sustained drive there for Mansfield comes up short. You know, they continue just to dominate the time of possession, but it doesn't really matter. 7 4 to go in the third quarter. McFrederick in the shotgun. Tiger showing blitz. Play action rolls out right. He's got a man wide open. His spot's on the halfback circle. 20, 25, and out to the 30. That was a nice little play design. You know, McFrederick booting to the right, and Spots kind of running a wheel route to the left. If he could have thrown a little bit farther, Spots probably scores, but still a nice pickup of 20. You can tell I grew up playing Madden because I called it the halfback circle, <laughs> yep. and it is a wheel route, same thing. It's, it's same immediately thing. what came to my mind yeah. was the Madden call. Man, yeah, if it wasn't Madden, it was Troy Aikman football, right? <laughs> like, that's what we grew up on. Oh, goodness. Here we go, Tecmo Bowl, baby. First down and 10 at the 30, six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. McFrederick and the arrows up 10 with the football. Going right to left, it's a handoff to Spots. Spots gets away from one man, now outside to the 30, and he's hit hard and brought down at the 32-yard line. Well, uh, Owens had him in the backfield, but he got away from him, and then Leo Hess comes up with the tackle for the Tigers. Yeah, a loss of two turns into a gain of two because of yards after contact. Good job by Spots, just not wanting to go down, showing some determination and some good balance to say, hey, I can shed one tackler. You're gonna have to at least bring two more to bring me down. Brings up second and eight. In the words of Electric Light Orchestra. I don't know your reference already. Don't keep bring me down. <laughs> 5.53 to go in the third. Second down and eight. Pressure coming. Maffitt in motion. Play action. Throws a screen to Metzger at the 32. Stiff arms one man, and he's pushed out at the 39. A nice pick up there. They'll mark it, I think, actually at the 40. And it's going to be real close to the first down 
We'll see if they get the call or move the chains. They're moving the chains. First down, Arrows. Catch number four for Metzger now, you know, just 23 yards. You know, we've kind of seen big play Metzger, you know, the last couple of weeks. This time, I think Mansfield Senior knowing, hey, number 21 is going to be a threat. But continuing to find a way to get Metzger involved in, in the game, keeping them involved, uh, always an important part of the game. Uh, good job just making the catch, making the first down yardage. Back to pass, McFrederick rolls right, he's in trouble. Lala Owens chasing him, he throws it downfield, almost intercepted at the 40. And he was looking for Colton Johnson downfield. Good coverage downfield by Isaiah Darson. Freshman defensive back, getting a lot of time here tonight. Yeah, it may have been a, a screenplay, you know, similar to the last one where Landon was booting out and he kind of looked back to the left like he was going to check it over there uh, but he didn't have pressure you know by Mansfield senior coming on him so kind of extended the play uh, it didn't look like any of the receivers going deep were really expecting a route to actually come to them so falls incomplete second down and 10 running backs on either side blitz coming McFrederick launches it up on a go route oh no Colton Johnson that's incomplete Johnson and McFrederick not on the same page there is Johnson and ran, he zigged and McFrederick threw a zag. So good coverage again by Darson on the outside. It almost looked like Landon didn't get enough on it. You know, like the, the first one that went for 73, you know, he really put it out there. Colton Johnson kind of run under it. That one kind of just kind of faded to the sideline. Uh, no threat for a catch or an interception. Brings up a big third and 10. 5.07 to go on the third. Five wide. Pressure up the middle, rolls near size, gonna have to launch it downfield. He's got a man at spots. Spots wow. catches it. What a Holy catch. cow. Oh, play Holy of the year cow. so far. Willie May style in center field. There are two options as a receiver. One, come back to your quarterback. Two, run deep. Spots chooses the second one, runs deep. McFrederick does a great job, just lays it out there. You could see Spots track it and just full lays out. Comes in bounce, great catch, clearly in bounce. Huge play on third and 10. And the progression for McFrederick from early in the season where he had a hard time with that play to that one, tremendous growth. A lot of growth in seven games. Five wide, Spots in motion, play action. McFrederick rolls out, Owens chasing. He's gonna probably tuck it run. No, he throws it into the back corner of the end zone, out of bounds. I Looking think, for Colton Johnson, but he had room to run. I think he was just feeling like maybe I've got it going tonight. Yeah, again, Saturday game session, uh, film session, he's gonna find out I could have gotten 15 yards just by running on that thing. But he fires it, again, a place where either his receiver, Colton Johnson, is gonna catch it or no one at all. So still not a bad throw decision compared to some of the questionable throws that maybe we saw in games two or three that Landon was having. So. Progression, right? For yeah. a first-year starter, <laughs> McFrederick has played well here tonight. And at this point, 24-14, Ashland up, now on the 21-yard line, threatening into the red zone here. You need to get some points. Extending this lead would be really big here in the third. Four wide. Back to pass. McFrederick, good pressure up the middle. Now he's sacked at the 32. Wow. No chance coming right up the middle. And that is a big sack there by Mansfield seniors, Makai Bradley. It seems like all day we've had six orange jersey. The Mansfield Tiger, you know, Tigers wearing orange tonight in the backfield, just getting good pressure, play after play. Typically we've seen Landon kind of be, have some success running left or booting left or, left or sprinting out. That time just too much pressure up the middle, big loss of 10. Third down and 20 at the 32. Back to pass, rolling right, rolling, rolling. Owens chasing. Go. McFrederick's got a man. It's Hyder at the 20. He pushes forward down near the 16. They're going to pick up 15 of the 20. Now fourth down and five, and another decision here for Coach Cedar. Yeah, that'll get the arrows inside the Shakelet Mechanical Red Zone. But more importantly, fourth and seven. Your kicker's already gotten blocked once on an extra point. More than likely, arrows are going to be going for it. Things are warming up at Shakely Mechanical Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling in Ashland. They're going for it. They're Fourth look, down and five. They're going to look for Sturry in the slot here on a little slant route. They've gone to it several times throughout the, the season. Fumble on the snap whistle and a flag. It's going to be a false start on the center. Yeah, it's going to be another snap infraction. Probably better than a fumble, though, at this point, Brandon. So that'll push him back five yards. Oh, man, 
Seth Shoemaker, guilty party there at the center spot. He's played really well this season, but he's also had a lot of pressure up the middle tonight, Tony, so he's feeling it there. Yeah, and that changes your play call. You know, going from a fourth and five inside the 20 to a fourth and 10 on the 21. Now you don't need to just pick up five or six. Now you need to pick up 12. 10 really, but you're probably looking to get 12. McFrederick in the shotgun, five wide, spots in motion. Haven't seen Hasse at all on offense tonight after the last few weeks playing really well. Wonder he got dinged a little early on in this game. I wonder if he's hurt. And a whistle and a, another timeout flag, Cedar. or do we have a timeout? Coach is timeout. in the Coach Cedar will take a quick one as well. Back with more on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Fourth down and 10 from the 21 yard line. McFrederick back to pass, looking, looking, pushed out of the pocket. He's in trouble. And he tries to throw it forward to Maffitt. It's incomplete at the 25. And that will turn the ball over. Look at he Story, had Story right in the open middle. over the middle, but just couldn't get his body shifted to make the throw. Yeah, again, you know, Mansfield Senior just bringing pressure again. Six guys, but I keep saying it because it keeps happening. A lot of pressure. And to find the guy that's open, you probably have your first receiver and your second receiver, but to have that time to check down to your third or the running back going out kind of in the flat into it. Turnover on downs. Last time for Mansfield, Mal Ashland giving it back. Turnover on downs. Oh, well, here comes the Tigers' offense. This is uh, just the third possession of the third quarter. Hill in the shotgun, five wide, four to the near, single to the far. I think it's Amar Davis. We saw this in the second quarter. They try to get to Amar in single coverage. He's got Trey Boyd on him. Yeah, they'll run a little bubble right here to the quad side, but really they're just trying to get one-on-one -on -one coverage to the, the short side. Keeper Hill gets away from one man and gets back to the line, maybe a yard of, a yard forward, I should say. The Miner in on the tackle and Demarion Dennison. Demarion Dennison, yeah, probably just making the, the most of that play, beating his original block, you know, playing again with that Torrey ACL, but still able to beat the offensive guard and tackle combination. Uh, just busting up the play, which again, messes up the timing, and then all of a sudden, gain of zero. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Arrows up 10. Tigers going left to right, five wide. Hill looking, goes up the middle. He's tripped up and then stays on his feet, and he gets out to the 27, maybe the 28. Grissinger in on the tackle for the Arrows, along with Caden, nope, Demarion Dennison, I think again. Yeah, just track him down from behind. Arrows almost had an opportunity to get a sack there. Brock Hill just kind of pulls it down. To rumbles forward for a gain of seven, third and three, sitting on the 27-yard line. Aiden Bryant, who was in there in defensive back, checks out. Colton Johnson back in. Hasse in there now and defense now. Hadn't seen him since early on in this game. Talked his way back into the game, I think. Colin Rohr deep at safety over here on the near side. Shotgun, Hill. Five on the play clock. Gonna have to hurry, they get it off. He's looking left, looking for Davis. He's got a man, and it's Davis at the 34. And that's gonna be enough for a first down on third down and three. Great throw by Brock Hill. Yeah, again, you know, the solo guy. So they go quads right, they change the play at the line of scrimmage. Coaching staff of the Tigers saw something that they like, but they really want to just isolate one-on-one -on -one matchup, which we've kind of seen all day against Trey Boyd, number two. Jameer Petty checks into the backfield for the Tigers. Ala Owens checks out. Looks Davis like, is topside. Looks like Hossie's kind of leaning forward like he's going to get a, a here from the outside. Gross, Bradley, and O'Brien lined up to the near side for the Tigers. First down and 10. It's a Hossie. pitch to Petty. Hossie blows it up. 
I had the call. <laughs> <laughs> well done, defensive coordinator. Hossie kept, you know, getting slid out there to cover that slot position. Finally said, hey, why don't we bring Hossie in with that outside linebacker, take the slot position. You know, just blew up that quick pitch to the right. Uh, loss of five. Great play. Second down and 15 coming up from their own 29. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Arrows up 10 here at Arlen Field. Brock Hill 14 for 20 for the game. Just 121 yards, which is abnormally low for this Tiger offense. Shotgun pass oh, looking. Oh. Brady Welsh got tackled in the backfield. No call. Hill getting away from Grissinger. Now getting away from Welsh. Cuts it back to the left. Back up the middle. Braylon Hyder goes after him, and he brings him down at the 33. I don't know how there wasn't a call. Brady Welsh literally got tackled in the backfield. But that's the end of the third quarter. Arrows up 24-14. Back with more after this on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt-free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dead. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. the fourth quarter what a ball game Tony yeah Mansfield senior finds himself down by 10 big stat you know that we have to pay attention to all year Mansfield seniors only put up three points in the entirety of all their fourth quarters while giving up 46 points to their opponents Mansfield seniors gonna have to find a way to put up some more than three not just tonight but for the rest of the season if they want to continue their winning ways Arrows up 24-14, third down and 10. Brock Hill with the ball, finds a man open. It's Gross at the 41, barrels his way forward to midfield and past midfield where the arrows stand him up. And he'll get the first down with a 16-yard pickup on third down. Hey, you're listening to Fireland's Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week with the Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340, powered by Fireland's Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Mansfield seniors coming back out, four wide to the left, isolating one-on-one -on -one receivers to the top. They've kind of gone away from their running game, which is probably the thing they need to do here, down by 10, 24 to 14 in the fourth quarter against the Arrows. Mark Davis split wide to the right, top side, against Trey Boyd, single coverage. Metzger's lined up deep as the middle safety, Roar to the near side, Hasse and Johnson, near side defensive backs. Shotgun snap. Looks near side, he's got a man. Miles Bradley wide open in that zone coverage. Caught at the 45, pushed out at the 43, or at the 37, rather. Ashland's done a good job of not showing their hands, you know, on defense, on the alignment. You know, they, they've done a nice job of lining up, not showing if we're in a man-to-man -man or in the zone. But eventually, once the play begins, in a, at the high school level, you kind of just fall right into your zone space or in your man-to-man -man space. Brock Hill's doing a good job here, just picking apart who's the guy that's open in a zone. And if they are open or running man-to-man, -man, who can outrun the defender? First down and 10, back-to-back -back first down pickups here for the Tigers at the 37 of the arrows. Pressure coming. That's a blitz by Spots. Can't get him. Hill escapes. 30, 25, 20, and he is hit out of bounds. Colton Johnson knocks him out at the 19. Big pickup there of 18 yards on the run by Mr. Hill. Almost a deja vu play of the first Tigers touchdown. Kind of a play that booted out to the right. Ashland should have had a tackle. A guy kind of spying them. The arrows did. Brock Hill just being the athlete that he is, weaves his way, not even quickly, like it wasn't even a fast run or an aggressive run, but he's just taking what the arrows are giving him. Quad right, single receiver to the near side is Davis. Hill in the shotgun. Hill's rushed 16 times now for 113 yards. 
Ten and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Arrows up ten. Hill looking to the near sideline. He had a man off the hands. Incomplete. Amar Davis can't haul it in. He threw a bullet over there. Did Hill. Yeah, Miles Bradley, uh, the senior, you know, has more receptions coming into this game. But clearly the Amar Davis connection is the place where Hill's wanting to go. That time just right through his hands. Uh, drop, drop catch, you know. Not defensive, just missed opportunity. Second down and 10, 10.35 to go. Back to Diamond Wright for Mansfield Tigers. 10 on the play clock. Keeper up the middle, 15. And wrapped up at the 11. Nice tackle by Trey Boyd. It's going to be real close to a first down. Just outside of the 10, might be a measurement. And they're saying it's third down and inches. Mansfield switching out to a heavier set, bringing in just one receiver, going back with three running backs. Full house formation. Owls cuts it back from the right to the left, and he's got the first down inside the 10, down near the seven yard line. This defense has now been on the field for 34 minutes while the offense for Ashland's only been on the field for 14 minutes. You know, now inside the 10 yard line, first and goal, Ashland really needs to tighten up. One more goal line stand this season would be wonderful right about now. Dennison out on the sideline. Looks to be struggling a little bit with that leg and the brace. First down and goal for the Tigers. Mills on the handoff, gets himself to the five yard line, gain of two. Arrows fans have gotten a little quiet here, but they're up 10 as we approach the nine minute mark. Yeah, now Mansfield continues to have three running back kind of set, set Miles Bradley out wide, but really no indication that they're looking to throw it here inside. Now the five yard line going to continue to run if they can. And Hill oh, runs into right. Petty and wide he's going to throw wide open on the right side. Touchdown. And that is a big one there. Have to take a look to see who that was because he was on the Bradley. far side. It was Makai Bradley coming out of the backfield as the fullback. And Bradley catches the touchdown. Brock Hill with a nice play action back there and recovered, almost fell down as he tripped with one of his tailbacks. Yeah, and Hill almost went down as he was booting out of there. Four arrows kind of tracking him down on the boot, thinking, you know, here's an opportunity to get a sack. Uh, good coverage down the field on, on Makai Bradley, but unfortunately just missed that fullback. Good hold on a tough snap, and the extra point's up and good. We'll take a break. 24-21 arrows on top here on iHeartRadio. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers. Whitaker Trusted Advisor since 1869, serving families in Ashland, Richland, and Wayne County. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. With offices in Ashland, Mansfield, Worcester, Columbus, and South Carolina, we have advisors that are ready to help you begin your journey to financial success. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. In the fourth quarter, Arrows and Tigers now a three-point game here at Arlen Field after the touchdown to Makai Bradley from Brock Hill. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne here on iHeartRadio and the OH Report as well. Beautiful night for a football game and a great game here, Tony. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. Mansfield Senior finally getting a touchdown on the season in the fourth quarter. Brings this game now into just one possession. But kicks it away. Grabbed in the way back by the 22. I think it was Colton Johnson who grabbed it. 
And he's wrapped up at the 25. Squib kick, tough one there, and it seems like it's just the new trend that everybody does. Yeah, you know, there's almost too much of an opportunity and too much speed at the high school level if you're going to kick it deep and try to have guys, you know, track down some of these track stars. But squib kicking puts in an element of just the balance and giving kind of a fullback or a linebacker the opportunity to pick it up. Uh, much more predictable way to, to cover kickoffs. 8.56 to go. First down and 10. Pressure's been the name of the game for Mansfield Senior, and no reason for them to go away from this. Ashland's going to have to find a way to get past that first line of five or six rushers and see if they can't get a big play. Maffet in motion. They're going to go throw the screen to him. He caught it and dropped it at the 20. Dead ball. It was a forward pass. Maffet couldn't hold on. Second down and 10. Wide open. Had some yards in front of him, at least five or six. Yeah, well, it was setting up to be a pretty good play. It wasn't going to be a huge play, but Ashland's kind of fallen into this, you know, not getting a lot of yards in first and second down and getting set up with third and long. It'd be great to see Ashland at least pick up a few yards here on second down, if not the first down, just to make that third down more manageable. Second down and 10 coming up. Crowd starting to get into it. Maffet in motion again. McFrederick looks. He's in trouble. Throws with his left hand. Oh, no. Intercepted. Intercepted by Owens. He's going to take it into the end zone. The ball is loose. Who has it? It goes out of the back of the oh end zone. Oh, my it's gosh. A, it's unbelievable. Another touchback. Ball goes out of the end zone. Owens had it. It goes out of the back of the end zone. Officials are going to get together and talk, but this should be the arrow's ball at the 20. So much pressure by the Tigers. Pressure. The Tigers had four guys rushing right up the middle. McFrederick, who has taken care of the ball all day, does the unthinkable, kind of throws it up there, and the big guy brings it down, rumbles 20 yards all the way down to the one-yard line, and Landon, just desperate to get it away, strips it, and the ball in the pile of guys in the end zone <laughs> just slowly rolls out of the end zone. Touchback. Here we are, back at the 20, first down first and 10. And 10. It's like it never happened, Tony. Unbelievable. <laughs> Wow. And if that has not re-engaged both sides of, of this stadium, nothing else is going to. Mansfield side clearly frustrated at what just happened. Ashland very much aware now. We got some work to do to seal this game in the fourth quarter. Twice have the Tigers had the ball at the goal line and lost control of the ball for touchbacks into the back of the end zone. Here we go, McFrederick hands it off to Spots, cuts it back, and he's wrapped up after a one, maybe two yard gain. Lala Owens, who had just come up with the tough play before, comes up with a tackle there. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate for Lala. Great, again, great interception, great run back, doesn't get anything. He'll get the, the interception on the scorebook, but doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Good play call there. I like to say, hey guys, let's settle down. We've had some incompletions here in the fourth quarter. Let's move the ball. Let's get back into Arrow's offense. Second down and nine. Approaching the eight-minute mark. The Arrows on their own 21, maybe the 22. Man in motion is Spots. Hands it off to Spots. Cuts it back to the left, past the 25. To the 27. So it'll be third down and a huge third down. Arrows are going to need three yards to keep this drive rolling. They're yeah. quick to the line of scrimmage, Tony. Yeah, good powerful run there by Spots. The first time he's just put his head down and gone forward trying to get a first down. McFrederick keeper, near side, cuts it outside. He's going to get the first down and then some. 35, 40, 45, back to midfield. 40, and he's tripped up by the last man, Miles Bradley at the 41. Goes for wow. 30 yards. Yeah. Tremendous run by Landon McFrederick. I think that's a play where they just wanted Landon to get two or three and secure that first down, but Landon had different ideas, bounced it out to the right. Could have stepped out of bounds at any time, but he had a lead blocker out there in Story. Cut it back in, picked up another five or six. Momentum back to Ashland's side as they move to their side of the field. First down and 10 at the 41. It's Luke Bryant in a quarterback. Play action. Uh-oh. Nope. Keeper. And he gets up forward to the 40, maybe the 39. Miscommunication there as McFrederick had split wide to the left. And it looked like Luke Bryant and the arrows not on the same page. Yeah, McFrederick was clearly expecting to get a quick pass out wide to the you know left side of the field. Quarterback clearly just wanting to hand it off the spots. He thought it was a draw call. So some confusion there, unfortunately, on first down. Gain of one, though, not too much of a disaster. 
Second down and long at the 39 yard line. McFrederick back in the shotgun. Twins to both sides. Spots in the backfield with him. Five on the play clock. Everybody in the box from Mansfield Senior. They're nine, coming. Nine guys within four yards of the line of scrimmage. Whistle, and I think an illegal shift or a false start, yep, on Johnny Met Metzger. Yeah, just wanting to get out into that pass route too soon. Well, they had moved Hasse into more of a max protect role on the end of the line, too, and Metzger, like you said, anxious to get going. Yeah, when, once you go from a five receiver set or a four receiver set, as a receiver, you know, the, the percentage chance that the ball's coming to be just got a little bit higher. <laughs> and I think Metzger just got a little excited there. But Ashland needs to find a way to pick up some yards here. Second and 14 at the 45. Frederick in the shotgun. Spots to his left. Maffet in motion. Handoff spots, busts through the line of scrimmage to the 39 yard line. Nice pick up there before Leo Hess brings him down. Yeah, pick up a five, probably doing the thing that they need to do, setting up third and seven, so still a good amount of yards that they, they need to pick up, but it makes it much more manageable. You're not trying to get a big chunk, something pushed down the field. You can still run the ball here with seven yards, or you can play with the middle of the field. Ashland coming out, trips left. Big third down here for the Arrows. Third and seven. Five and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Maffet in motion. He hands it off to Spots. A run, 35, and he gets himself close. But I think he's going to be just a little short, Tony. He's going to be maybe a yard short. They'll actually mark it at the 33. They needed to get to the 31. Not a very good spot for the arrows. Yeah, Ashland's going to come out again and check real quick. You know, fourth and one, they went for it last time. Hyder's going to come in for Maffet as a, probably a, another pass blocking option. Um, if they wanted to pass, Mansfield Senior continues to get pressure right up the middle. So Ashland's going to say, hey, guys, probably wedge block. Everyone block to the middle. Biggest play of the game coming up. Fourth down and one at the 33. Keeper, McFrederick hit in the backfield. He stretches forward. It's going to be close. I don't think he got it, Tone. Great dive in there from the defensive line. And they're going to have it at the 32. They're going to bring the chain, I believe. Yeah, the line judge had his spot right away. First, no, they not go first enough. down to the Tigers. Short. So no, no measurement, not a great spot, but the arrows go for it on the keeper up the middle, and now it's the Tigers' turn on offense, and the arrows are going to have to come up with a stop. We could be looking at a potential overtime too, Tony. <laughs> We've not seen one yet today, this year. Now the arrows are up three. But we also remember they've scored four touchdowns and failed on every extra point slash two point conversion attempt. Yeah, and that makes it fun for us to talk about and we can analyze it after the game. But right now, those points are out of mind, uh, out of sight. They don't matter. So you're up by a three, Mansfield Senior with the ball. Rock Hill in the shotgun. Trips right, single receiver to the near side. Petty in the backfield. 4.52 to go in regulation. Arrows up 24-21 at Arlen Field. Tough snap. Hands it off to Petty. Tries to bust it outside. He does. Schmitz tries to bring him down, and Rohr comes in and helps him bring down the ball hand, the ball carrier. But they'll, Petty will take it to the 37. Gain of five. A nice pickup on first down. Yeah, Mansfield Senior coming out quick, too. They're, they want to play with a little bit of tempo. I think they feel like they may have a little bit of advantage in the energy level of what they have. They've maybe seen this defense start to kind of fade a little bit. They've seen some of these guys on the Ashland side play both offense and defense. If you can speed up the tempo a little bit, maybe you can take advantage of a little bit of tiredness and weakness. Hill in the shotgun. Trips to the near side. Single far. Petty is it behind him in the pistol. Second and five, hand off to Petty. Petty gets wrapped up in the backfield right Brady away. Welsh. Brady Welsh. You get to see that he was kind of twitchy as a defensive end side. He was ready to go. He knows, hey, if I have a mindset that I'm not blockable and I can get him in the background, I can in the backfield. Good job for a tackle for loss. This portion of Arrow football on WNCO is brought to you by America's Home Place. Custom home builders at Township Road 405 and Route 30 in Jeromesville. Build a better future at americashomeplace.com. Third down at seven for the Tigers at their own 35. Three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Hill in the shotgun. Good opportunity here. If you can get a stop for zero for one, probably you'll get a punt at your arrow. So if you can stop them from picking up a good chunk of yards, you might get a punt here. Back to pass. Rolls near side. Bar oh. There's a hold on the backside. Throw out to the 35. Caught. Gross is going to take it. All the way, but it's it coming will back. not matter. There's a hold in the backfield. First holding call all day is going to negate a 75-yard touchdown pass. Take it off the books. Wow. 
You heard it. That's coming back all the way. Gross caught it at the 41, went all the way down with what would have been a touchdown for 65 yards, but there's a hold on the backside, and it was a big play. Yeah, you can see on the replay here on the OH report if you're following along online. Three or four guys had a shot at it. Gross comes down with it and just runs up the sideline. But the first big call that wasn't a snap infraction or some little you know, kickoff infraction, first holding call we've seen all day, either side of the team, big time to throw that penalty. But it was the right call. He got tackled. That moves it back. It was third and seven. They're going to put it, it back to the, the 18. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So yeah, in the pass blocking, you know, the linemen are going to you know, drop back and let that pressure come. So when the holding comes, it's not just at the line of scrimmage. It's actually in the backfield. Third down and 25. You can, you, you can expect a go route here or a big post route. You know, if you're a defender, it's just, hey, don't let them catch the ball and no, no penalties. Trips right. Davis to the near side. Petty in the backfield. Brock Hill, back to pass, pushed out of the pocket, rolls right. He's going to launch it downfield over the middle, caught at the 32. Mackay, it's Miles Bradley who pushes his way close to the 40. He's short of the first down, but not by much a huge pickup. Yeah, when it was third and seven, I said, hey, if you can stop him for a fourth and seven, you'll probably get a punt. They ended up getting the holding, you know, that big play. It's going to bring up about fourth and two. So at this point in the game, good opportunity to go for it. Now we're at two and a half minutes to go in the game. 24, 21 arrows. Tigers with the football. Fourth down and two at their own 40. Huge play coming for the Arrows. And Coach Cedar and Coach Stackhouse goes sprinting down the sideline, says, I want a timeout. And the <laughs> official gives it to him. We'll keep it here because guess what? We're not missing anything here coming out of this one with 2.20 to go. What do you expect offensively to see from Coach Jokey Bradley's Tiger squad? Yeah, Mansfield Seniors had good opportunities and good, good uh, has had success throwing the ball out quick to the trips or quads to the sides whether they stack two receivers or go quads you know I expect just a quick pass and let one of your receivers Avion Gross Miles Bradley one of your big six foot one 215 guys pick up three or four yards if you trust your team as a throwing team that's the way I would do it now Brock Hills also had some success on some keepers as well yeah and Ashland's done a good job of trying to spy them but athlete to athlete athlete we just haven't quite been able to match up so we've actually done a great job of having the defender in the place to make the tackle uh, uh, Christian has had an opportunity, uh, you know, if I were going to put someone into a, a spy scenario, Welsh would be the guy, you know, in this scenario that I would say, hey, who's my most athletic guy out there? Maybe Caden Schmidt's out there to say, hey, we know he may run. It's your job to not let him get more than one and a half yards. Fourth down and two. 2.20 to go in the fourth. Arrows up three. Tigers football at the 40. Arlen Field going crazy. Brock Hill with a hard count trying to get the arrows to jump. Davis to the near side. Gross and Bradley on the far side, along with O'Brien. Ashland tightening up now, putting people in the box. Hill fakes right. Welsh chases him. Throws it over to Bradley. Caught at the 45. First down and more. Oh, no! And he stepped out of bounds. So he must have stepped out. It looked like he was going to go all the way, but he stepped out at his own 49-yard line. First down. Yeah, they'll give him a game, gain of 11. He didn't think he stepped out of bounds. He was going to go for a 60-yard touchdown run. First down for Tigers. Good win for them. Probably fortunate for Ashley that that didn't go for more yards, though, as well. Right now on the 50-yard line. Don't forget the scoreboard for NC State. Find them all on NC State scoreboard at our website, WNCOAM, brought to you by North Central State. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. We just got an official's timeout. Umpire wants to talk to his team about something. What a football game here tonight at Arlen Field. The Arrows trying to hang on after jumping out on top early on. They haven't scored in quite a while. Ball spotted at the 50. They'll mark it as a 10-yard gain on that last one. 2.04 to go. Brock Hill and the Tigers offense with the football. Still with three timeouts, the Arrows with two. Hill in the shotgun, looking over to the sideline for the call. Trips near side, single to the far. Petty back in the backfield. Hand off to Petty, cuts it back towards the middle. He's met immediately by Welsh and I think Caden Briggs, no, is Parker Grissinger. A gain of one. Clock runs. Second down coming up. 
Second and eight. They'll mark it just short of the 48-yard line. Tigers come out again. Quads left, one guy right, trying to match up against uh, Amari Davis against Trey Boyd. Uh, they've had some success again, you know, just having that one-on-one -on -one matchup. They've not been able to get Trey Boyd deep. Wouldn't be surprised if they take another shot, though, here before the end of the game. Shotgun snap, looking to Davis on that right side, off his hands and incomplete. Wow, Brock Hill throws a bullet over there on second down. That brings up third and eight. Yeah, his, his heartbeat's probably beating a little bit quicker here now, under a minute and a half. Down by three, probably put a little bit more zip on it than what it needed, clearly, and more than Amari Davis could handle. Uh, third down and eight, again, four down territory, so Mansfield Tigers just want to pick up some more yards to make the next fourth down possible. 123 to go, third and eight. Arrows up 24-21, Arlen Field. A big football game here tonight between the Arrows and Tigers. Arrows trying to come up with their third straight win to move to three and four. Back to pass, pressure coming from Welsh. Working against Thomas, he's gonna keep it. Comes back to the near side. Now he's gonna launch it to wide a wide open. open Lala Owens, catches it at the 22, inside the 10, makes a man miss, he's in for a touchdown. It is a clean field, and that's gonna be 48 yards. Brock Hill to Lala Owens, who comes up and makes up for the mistake on the fumble that would have put the Tigers ahead earlier. Yeah, and somehow Lala Owens just kind of sneaks out uncovered, you know, 30 yards down the field. Hill does a great job just kind of putting everything he can to get that 30-yard pass. Lala does a good job cutting back. Probably fortunate that they let him go in and score to give Ashton a little bit of time here to try to take the lead back. Extra point forthcoming. It's 27-24. This is a big one, too, and it's up. And it is good. So we'll keep it here. 28-24. 109 to go, Tony. The Arrows have two timeouts left. They've got an opportunity. We were in this situation before earlier this season, I think, against Taze Valley, and we came up just a little short. Yeah, unfortunately, against Taze Valley, I think after the kickoff, we just didn't even get a first down after that. I think Ashland's going to be a little bit more developed than that. I think we'll see us move the ball. But Mansfield Tigers have had success with pressure, bringing five and six, and again, seven guys sometimes against Landon McFrederick. Uh, probably not going to have the opportunity to run a 30-yard post route or just a big go route or let a big play develop. They're going to have to find quick hitting plays that get into big chunk yards. You know, like you said, two timeouts remaining, minute nine. Uh, the hurry up offense is well in effect at this point. And you practice this every week. We saw them back in August. We went to a practice before game one. And right in the middle of the practice, they yelled out two minute offense. Offense ran out ran their two-minute offense. So it's something they've practiced. It's different, though, in Arlene Field against the Tigers with this crowd after that touchdown. Glad you're all joining us here tonight on IHAR Radio, Fox Sports 1340, as well as on the OH Report. 24 to 28, the Arrows now down four to the Tigers. Mansfield Sr. has just kept battling back and hasn't gone away, and the Arrows haven't been able to put any nails in a coffin. 109 to go. And Pup will boot it away. We'll see most likely a squib kick here. They haven't kicked it deep really yet today. Yeah, and you can see Colton Johnson just kind of sneaking up, usually sitting back there at the five yard line. He's kind of wandered his way up to the 15, hoping he can have a chance to pick it up. Now he boots it deep. Johnson goes back and lets it bounce. He's, He's gonna, gonna have to it. grab it at the four. To the 10. And wrapped up at the 13. So the Arrows with their worst starting field position of the night, down four with a minute and two to go. And the Tiger, Tigers special teams coach saw the same thing I did. You know, when you start cheating forward, it's like, well, hey, don't squib it because that's what they want. Kick it as far as you can. Colton thinking it's going to roll into the end zone and you can bring it out. You know, unfortunately, just didn't get that roll. Now sets up Ashland needing 87 yards for a score. That's good math. First down and 10 at the 13. McFrederick comes in. Arrows with two timeouts. Clock will stop on timeouts. I mean, on first downs. Of course it stops on timeouts, dummy. <laughs> it will stop on a first down. There's eight on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry. They're not at the line yet. Yeah. McFrederick and the Arrows better hurry. You can't burn a timeout here, boys. They're going to have to. They get it off. Whoa. Just barely. McFrederick rolls near side. He's looking for Metzger. Throws it up deep. And he can't come up with it out at midfield. Metzger had kind of slowed down a little bit, I think, not thinking that ball was coming. But either way, 
tough play. Yeah, tough play, especially as the play clock's going back. Good job just chucking it out there. Yeah, and I think if Metzger was running full speed, he probably could have gotten to it. Their, their defensive approach, again, uh, now in the, kind of their prevent, they've got five guys that are playing 20 yards back. They're still going to rush four or five, uh, but they're going to leave the middle of the field open. So if Ashland wants to, they can pick up post routes and seam routes and middle routes that are 10 and 12 and 15 yards. It, it's just a matter of if Layden's going to choose that or if he's going to try to continue to push the ball down the field. Second down, McFrederick pressured, lobs it right to Lala Owens, catches it, and that is going to do it. Owens picks off McFrederick. And he knows it. And runs it out of bounds. He tried to just sort of lob it up over Owens, but Owens is six foot five, and the big fella grabs it. And Landon McFrederick is disheartened down at the five-yard line. Yeah, if there's been 50 or 60 offensive plays for the Arrows, Lala Owens has come on a blitz on 48 of them. This is one of the two that he probably doesn't blitz. And what do you expect? You don't expect the 6'4 defensive end to not be coming. So yeah, Landon under a little bit of pressure, tries to flip it out there right to the big defensive end. His second interception of the game gives the Mansfield Tigers back the ball on the nine yard line. With two timeouts, Mansfield will probably just run the ball. Ashland's gonna have to try to stand someone up and try to get a turnover at this point. Coach Cedar comes over and consoles Landon McFrederick on the sideline who is heartbroken on the bench. Tigers are in victory formation. They're not even gonna run a play. And 47 seconds left on the clock. Yep, takes a snap. And you know, McFrederick has nothing to be disappointed in here tonight. He played a tremendous game. I always feel bad to see a kid throw an interception that ends it. The Arrows with a valiant effort are going to come up a little bit short here tonight. 28-24. The Tigers actually will have to do one more victory formation and take a knee here as they do. Brock Hill holds his hands up in victory formation and the Tigers are going to pull off a big win. 28-24 over the Arrows here at Arlen Field. A comeback victory for the Tigers. The Arrows lose in dramatic fashion here at Arlen Field to fall to two and five. The senior Tigers will move to five and two. We'll have more after this here on iHeartRadio. Here on iHeartRadio. Hi, I'm John Mark Young financial advisor and owner with Wix. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Here at Arlen Field, the Arrows fall 28-24 to the Mansfield Senior Tigers in a what I would describe as a wild game here, Tony. The, both teams had some great moments. Both teams had some not so great moments, but a pretty entertaining football game at the least. Yeah, a lot of fun to watch and, and really a game of two halves, right? You know, the first half clearly won by Ashland. Felt like momentum was going their way. Mansfield Senior was just really fighting to keep in the game, you know, going into halftime and then coming out of the halftime. Mansfield Senior seemed to f figure out what's going on with offense. They found a way to, you know, slow down the Ashland uh, offense as well, uh, force a couple of turnovers, something that this Mansfield Senior team has done really good at. Um, you know, they came into the game uh, with 10 interceptions. They add two more to that, so they're up to 12 interceptions on the season through seven games. So good job by them making confusion, making pressure against Mansfield Senior, um, you know, just bringing pressure consistently and trusting your secondary guys to cover uh, one-on-one are -on -one, Ashland receivers. 28 to 24, 
We'll take one more break here in the post game and be back with more to wrap it up here from Arlen Field right after this on iHeartRadio. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Management. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dead. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Hi, I'm John Mark Young, a financial advisor and owner with Whitaker Myers Wealth Management. Whitaker Myers Group, trusted advisor since 1869, serving families in Ashland, Richland, and Wayne County. We believe in the financial freedom and power of living debt free. With offices in Ashland, Mansfield, Worcester, Columbus, and South Carolina, we have advisors that are ready to help you begin your journey to financial success. Visit our website at www.whitakerwealth.com to learn more and schedule a meeting. At Arlen Field, the arrows fall. Unfortunately, the senior Tigers come up with a big last couple of minutes there to overtake the arrows if you're rooting for the arrows. If you're rooting for the Tigers, you're saying, hey, we what, finally, a, what a way to win this ball game. Yeah, and we finally saw the Tigers play in the fourth quarter. Well, in the fourth quarter, if you're a Tigers fan, you know, the Tigers haven't had a lot of success putting points up in the fourth quarter. Uh, they do today, putting up 14 and enough to get the win. Uh, I'll, I'll take us back to Brandon, in the first half, and we said we weren't going to talk about it in the fourth quarter. We said, hey, those four points that Ashland didn't get on a bad snap on a PAT, a missed two-point conversion, a block PAT and another missed two-point conversion. Uh, that is four points, which would have made this 24-28 game a little bit different right now where the stadium's cleared out and people are kind of hopping into their cars. We'd be going into overtime, but at this point, you can't look at that. Yeah, that's tough. I'm sure the coaches are going to come and uh, check out tape and look at those things and say, oh, just a couple of small things here and there. Well, coached game, really, though, by the Arrows. To, you know, coaching staff, some great calls by Coach Stack. Coach Cedar did a great job here tonight. Some tremendous uh, calls on the on the offensive side. I, I, I was impressed with the arrows tonight. I came in tonight thinking, you know, on paper, I'm not sure the arrows are going to be able to, to to win this ball game. And then we got to the half, and I said, you know what? I 
I think we're going to win this ball game. And we came so close. I know there's no moral victories. We did talk in the pregame about this being one of those revelatory, those revealing games. And I think what you saw tonight, at least in my opinion, Tony, is that the Arrows have a chance to win some of these games going forward against Lex, maybe maybe against Worcester, and maybe against West Holmes. You never know. I mean, they've gotten better each week. Yeah, you know, and, and you said it in the pregame as well that this Mansfield Tigers team uh, d does well. You know, they have athletes. They have, they're well coached. They've had success in the postseason, and this team is going to have success again in the postseason. So this may not be the last time we see the Mansfield Tigers. Ashland was able to beat them twice last year. This may just be the first win for Mansfield. I'm sure Ashland would love to have another opportunity uh, you know, in a few more weeks. Oh, it'd be great. Win. Yeah, right. It'd be great to be back here in about a month to uh, get back here for a playoff game. Maybe if the stars lined up correctly. <laughs> the, yeah, very possible too, right? Ashland goes to Lexington, a team that Mansfield Senior beat last week. So a winnable game for Ashland. Uh, then Ashland will finish up uh, at home against West Holmes and then uh, having the Generals of Worcester come in uh, for the final two games. Uh, still in the running. Uh, OCC still a possibility. You know, West Holmes in a couple weeks, if you can uh, sneak a win now, against West Holmes. Um, not a season over by any means after a loss. Uh, just another opportunity to get a little bit better and develop. There's a very unhappy child down on the field right now. If you heard that squealing, I apologize. Somebody is very unhappy. He didn't get a nap today, I don't think. And it's way past his bedtime at 930. So I'm going to turn down the crowd mic for everybody out there, for all of us. Now, maybe he's just unhappy that the Arrows lost because it seems to be an Arrows fan out there. What kind of numbers you got for us, Tony, that stick out to you? Uh, Brock Hill, you know, quarterback for the Tigers, had a great game, 20 for 28. He goes for 235 yards and two touchdowns, one interception, and that was on the first pass play of the game uh, was taken back by an arrow defender uh, for a touchdown. Landon McFrederick uh, had a great first half, you know, two touchdowns, had completed some big pass plays, was hitting the screen play well, was finding open receivers. Uh, he ends eight for 23 for 183 yards, still two touchdowns, but added two interceptions in the fourth quarter. Uh, Colton Johnson led the way for the arrows, six catches, 78 yards, receiving a uh, big 78 yard touchdown reception. Johnny Metzger, as expected, five catches. Just 32 yards so I think Mansfield Tigers kind of knew like that's the guy that they're going to want to get the ball to so if we can take him out of the running that probably give us an opportunity to win the day uh, receiving for the Tigers again three-headed monster we talked about all three of these guys pregame Amar Davis 10 catches 71 yards never really got more than eight or nine yards uh, but was consistently getting chunks of plays chunks of yards for first downs uh, Miles Bradley six receptions for 73 yards avion gross six receptions 35 yards what do you have for caden spots do you have any running numbers for him on there I'm, w I'm wondering how we did running the ball it seemed like we had some good runs at times but you know spots just had 11 carries so not a whole lot for the game 42 yards uh spots was really more featured in the passing game you know really catching more um Catches oh. to the flat, and then he's running 20 yards and 25 yards. Well, and his Willie Mays catch down the sideline, right? That's a reception. Yeah, yeah not I mean, a run. that yeah. was an amazing <laughs> catch. But I, I called it the play of the year so far, and I think it was. Caden Spots with a tremendous play. The Arrows tonight fall short here against the Tigers, and uh, a tough one for I'm sure they're going to go into this week thinking about the what ifs and, and, you know, how do you get yourself ready if you're Coach Cedar and, and the staff? For Lexington next week, how do you wash this one out and say, what do we, you know, we're going to learn from this and move on? Uh, yeah, I, I think you go back and you just kind of say, hey, uh, our offensive line continues to need to develop, um, but our defense probably played the best game that I've seen our defense play. Um, first time we saw our defense, the Arrows defense put points on the board. Uh, good job for them by turning not, not just making a turnover but getting points off it um, and they really didn't give up big chunk plays you know I, I think there was one play that got called back that was 50 yards and another one that we thought may, may have been a, a big play that was 50 yards but the defense played well the arrows offense continues to develop McFrederick is just a good athlete you know uh, making running plays turning 10 yard plays into 50 yard runs so I think you just continue to build off that and know that Lexington is a winnable game. Uh, and then after that, that's your last road game for the season. You got two more at home, and then you start looking at, can we sneak into the playoffs and have one more? You know, the last thing I'll say before we, we head out uh, for the night is that I, I, I know that Landon McFrederick made a couple of tough passes there in, in the fourth quarter, but we also saw some, some growth from him tonight and then over the last few weeks. I feel like he's just gotten better and better from week one till now, and I think he's got room to grow. Uh, for sure. I know he's hard on himself. I felt bad for him as a parent looking down there seeing he was clearly upset down on the sideline and you know my heart goes out to him for that but uh, he's gotten better and he's got a lot of things to 
to continue to get better at. Yeah, he, he continues to, to make better decisions, smarter decisions. He's being patient in the pocket. You know, th that's really been developed over the last couple of weeks. Seeing that he's not just trying to, to tuck it and run or get out of bounds or, or force something. He kind of is learning you have four downs to make something happen, so just take your time. Uh, but yeah, and we've all been there. If you've ever played a sport before, whether it's baseball and you overthrow the first baseman, it's just like as soon as you let it go, it's just like, I, I know what I just did. Uh, and I can imagine that's what it feels like as a quarterback. You let it go, and then you see the big guy, and just like, that's going to be caught, you know? So. Yeah. Well, Tony, thanks. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate all of our folks over at the OH Report. Daniel Dunbar back at the station. And for Mr. Aaron Hines, I'm Brandon Wells saying Godspeed, God bless. Have a good night, everybody.